Troyer because they were muted when they came in. All right. Um, what's up, everyone? So today we're going to be doing a or tonight we're going to be doing a debate between Jay Dyer and Detroyer on whether or not God exists. I appreciate everyone coming, and obviously, like Jay and Detroyer, thanks for coming on. We don't have a lot of these anymore. Um, so I guess I'll start. If uh, Jay wants to just give a short introduction for people who might not know who you are, like what you do, what you believe, you know, what you're about, stuff like that. Yes. Uh, I do jaysanalysis.com. I'm a student of philosophy and theology, cover a lot of movies, geopolitics, do a lot of uh, goofy comedic type of stuff as well, and I do a lot of debates. Um, so I come from a, uh, Orthodox Christian perspective. I've been through uh, a few different religious views. I was raised, uh, Protestant, got into Roman Catholicism and then, uh, studied a lot of Platonism and Neoplatonism and then got into Orthodoxy in my, uh, thirties. So, um, I'm here to argue in favor of the existence of the triune God, uh, the validity and coherence of the presuppositional argument, um, and the coherence of the Christian worldview. I think it's the only worldview that really gives a grounding for uh, the what we could call a worldview. So that's my position. All right. And Detroit, if you could just do the same, just give a short little introduction on what you're about and what you're going to be defending or uh, arguing for tonight. Sure. Um, I'll just start by saying briefly, uh, thanks for hosting this discussion and thanks, Jay, for taking a part. Um, I'll just say... Briefly, that uh, I have a uh, bachelor's in philosophy, as far as relevant here, and I like engaging with uh, others on philosophical issues and, and so forth. Um, and in terms of what my views are, um, uh, religiously, I, I consider myself agnostic on the existence of God. Um, in this discussion, I'll be um, taking a sort of opposition stance to his uh, this sort of transcendental or, or uh, presuppositionalist approach to uh, belief in God. Um, I'm sorry, you cut beyond off. Beyond that, you, you say you're going to critique the view. Is that what you said? I'm sorry. You cut yeah, I, it's my position that, um, at least as far as I can tell, that that the view does not um, convincingly demonstrate uh, okay. the, the existence of the Christian God or or of a God in general. Sorry, let me know if my audio is you're good. Um, shit, because it was it was me. I was distracted. It wasn't you. I had to... yeah. Sounds good. Something. Uh, so, Jay, if you could lay out just very quickly for a lot of people who don't know what the transcendental argument for God is, just as, as, you know, as much detail as you want. Right. I would state it that um, if we look at anything that pertains to what we could call a worldview, so anything in the domain of ethics, metaphysics, or epistemology, any of the branches or any area of life, whether it's uh, something like objective ethics or whether it's something like... Um, abstract entities, mathematical entities, uh, logic itself, meta-logic, meta-ethic, um, any of these kinds of topics or things that when we try to make sense of them and to see if they are coherent and to give a grounding for them, we are oftentimes led to, I would argue, uh, transcendental preconditions. In, in other words, that there are preconditions that uh, are necessary or must be the case for any of the things that I listed to be possible. So we're saying that they are preconditions of possibility at all. And then my uh, addendum to that is that when I look at all the various transcendental categories or presuppositions, uh, and there are granted, there are different types of transcendental arguments. People make different uh, types of arguments. I'm making a very specific one. I'm going to say that when I list or look at all these different transcendental categories, such as uh, the existence of an external world, such as the existence of a self that is coherent and retains uh, memories and, and impressions and so forth over time, um, the uh, 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 space-time uh, perception of an external world, um, uh, induction, uh, the, the uh, ob objectivity of ethics, the uh, invariant nature of uh, immaterial objects like uh, numbers or laws of logic, all of these types of things are absolutely nece necessary and oftentimes assume or uh, necessarily correlate or imply one another. 
And so in that regard, I would say that you need a uh, higher level, even higher order transcendental that encompasses and can ground all of the transcendentals themselves. So look at it in a like a three tiered way to where we have the world in front of us. We have the perception of the world. We have experiences in the world. Um, we have meaning for sentences and, and propositions and so forth. We use logic, etc. Grounding those, we need, I would argue, transcendental categories. And then when I have all these transcendental categories in sort of a bundle, grounding those, we need a personal God, and namely the Trinity that is found in Orthodox Christianity, because that uh, argument, that theism is unique. So there's not another type of theism that can ground, for example, the problem of the one and the many, or that can ground the uh, distinction between creator and cre creature, and yet at the same time, through the divine energies, have a relationship within imminent in the created order, and yet at the same time not identical to it. Uh, it's the divine mind, for example, that grounds immaterial logical objects like numbers or laws of logic. And so therefore, I'm arguing for a form of divine conceptualism. I'm not arguing for Plato's divine conceptualism, but a form of it, which I would just say is the transcendental argument. So that is my version of the argument. All right, and also to try just real quick, uh, while Jay was talking, you had some typing. Maybe if you could turn on push to talk. Yeah. Uh, next uh, time. Uh, I was going to ask. I was going to ask if that was audible. Because I, I take. I'll turn push to talk on. Yeah. All right. So, I think oh, that was good. You could start. I, I think maybe if I state what I think the argument is you're trying to make, and see if you can correct me or let me know if this is more or less correct. Um. So you're supposing that there are these truths about the world of, say, causation, induction, sure. uh, uh, um, identity over time, the existence of the external world. Right. Um, those things have uh, necessary preconditions. There's, there's other things which have to be the case in order for those things to be true. And right. at least one of those things is um, the Christian God or the Orthodox Christian God. Well, I'm, I'm not saying at least one of those things. I'm but saying the only thing, perhaps. Yeah. Right. I'm saying that the only thing that, but when we look at all of the uh, Christian worldview, so it's an argument particularly for not just the existence of God, but also by extension, the rest of the Christian revelation and worldview, that that world and that deity makes sense of all of those things, the coherence of the transcendental categories, etc. Uh, and that worldview alone. And so other worldviews like Muslim, uh, Islam or something like that, those are going to be deviations, we would argue, from our worldview. But uh, simply put, yes, that, that's kind of what I'm saying. All right. So for, I assume we'll get to the individual things at some point. But before we get to that, um, it's not quite clear to me how you get from these things required to have these necessary, some necessary precondition, which let's just suppose for now, how do you get from that to the necessary precondition is the Orthodox Christian God? And it must be that. Right, because again, it requires looking at uh, multiple transcendental categories and how they interrelate with one another. For example, uh, the existence of the external world presupposes a self that is experiencing the external world. Now, theoretically, one could say, well, I just deny an external world, or I deny the self. Uh, and I would reply by saying at any point that you deny what, what I would call preconditions, you're immediately put in a position to destroy the possibility of knowledge at, at all. So if there's no self, then you can't argue your position. You're not even arguing. You're, there's no self. That's, you're not making an argument. <laughs> so I'm saying that, um, you know, that external world, for example, presupposes a self. Uh, there are assumptions that are necessary for um, perceiving things in an external world. For example, we perceive things from beginning to middle to end in a um, four-dimensional spatio-temporal uh, mm -hmm. external world. Uh, that's another transcendental precondition. It happens within time. You know, I mentioned beginning, middle, end. That's, that uh, is related right. to the notion of time. I, I'm not a Kantian, but I think Kant is correct that things like space and time could be considered transcendentally necessary categories, at least as far as we know how to. Sure, absolutely, yeah, causation, teleology. I would say all of those things are valid uh, examples, and I'm, I'm extending the argument saying that I think they also interrelate. It doesn't really make sense to talk about causation without some notion of the external world. I mean, you could think that the external world is all mental or something like that, but there's still a causal relation that's going on. 
Uh, you could think that the external world is, I don't believe this, but I'm just saying that people could come up with all types of conceivable, you know, well, what if I believe in teleology and causation, but I think the whole external world is just a mental phenomenon. Okay, but you're still admitting the, the principle that there are, uh, you know, forces that are that are involved in causation. There is some notion of purpose that's out there, uh, however you conceive of it. Um, I'm just saying that uh, I do believe that they necessitate and they interrelate with one another. And they presuppose, I, I, I would even go a little bit further and say, I think they presuppose a specific type of world, namely the world that we experience, right? The commonly experienced external world that we are aware of. That world is the one that I'm arguing for, and, it, and it's only really explained in the context of the of the Christian paradigm as a whole. Yeah, so I think my question was how you get to that last step, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm willing to grant, at least for this part of the discussion, right, that all of these things are real. Like, we have to suppose that these things are real at least, right? Um, the self, the external world, whatever. How do you get from that, that these things are real, and perhaps even that they're interrelated in some important way? How do you get from that to, well, the necessary precondition for them, either individually or collectively, is the Orthodox Christian God? Right. That's why I included the aspect of divine conceptualism, that mm -hmm. when I speak of grounding things or giving an account for things, um, I'm grounding them in an omniscient, eternal, divine mind that is able to connect and interrelate all of these different things. For example, I, I, if unless there is an external world, and for example, as you know from you know, classic problems in the history of philosophy, if I begin with the human mind, um, I can never really prove that there is an external world if my starting point is autonomous human reasoning. So I kind of have to just assume that there is an external world. And there's, you know, four or five other uh, key things that I could I could list from the history of any um, critique of empiricism, you know, like the myth of the given, uh, the uh, problem of induction, the external world, uh, mm -hmm. the existence of abstract objects. Those are, are uh, typical problems in any empiricist type of worldview. And most of the time, 95% of the time, I'm arguing against somebody who's, who's got an empiricist presupposition. So I would say that if you are an empiricist and your presupposition is that there is no external or that, 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 uh, that those issues are just assumed, then I would say, okay, they're assumed, but how do you ground something like numbers? How do you ground something like logic? Because you can't ground it. Uh, or give a justification for it just by saying that, the, that these types of things are equated to uh, matter or material forces or energy or energy or motion, uh, matter in flux, basically, because the, char the, the characteristic of immaterial invariant abstract objects is that they don't change. They're not subject to flux, right? So that would apply to numbers, abstract objects, concepts, uh, logical laws, any of these types of things. They don't evolve, they don't, uh, you know, change with the way that uh, matter uh, evolves or changes. So therefore, where are they and how are they grounded? And so ultimately, any empiricist position ends up in nominalism. And so the only other option really is a form of universalism to believe in the existence of universals or to believe in um, some way to ground them in an external beyond the, the, in, the, in the finite human mind. Really, the only other option that's left is some form of divine conceptualism. So, wait, is your, so your way to get to um, the Orthodox Christian God is to say, at least with regards to um, abstracta, is that, well, these things are real. We're, we're realists about these things. And the only way to be realist about them is, is to say that they're grounded in um, yes. or a, a divine mind. The, right. the conceptual. So why would we suppose that? I mean, how, how do you how do you demonstrate that? There are two steps, right? The first, I mean, ignore the step. Just for sake of argument, we can I suppose that we're realists about these things. I tend not to be. I, I lean nominalist, but we suppose we can suppose that we're realists. And the the question I'm asking is, how do you demonstrate that the only coherent way to be a realist is to be a divine conceptualist about them? Because we need uh, a mind or a, um, a substrate, a straight or substructure, you could say, that is able to string all of these pearls together on a single string, right? Because again, it's not just that I'm going to. Oh well, all I have to do is prove the existence of numbers, right? 
Well, it, the world is not just numbers. I mean, there's also other things going on. There's, you know, causation and all these other things. So mm -hmm. uh, I believe that all of those things are interrelated. And so we're, what we're arguing for is a competing worldviews, competing paradigms. And my paradigm makes sense. It's coherent. I believe in a coherent view uh, in a limited sense of, of what's true. Okay. And so I have a worldview. I have a paradigm where there is a revealed uh, deity, God, who makes sense of those things. It makes sense that if man is made in the image of God, he has the ability to use logic, to use reasoning, analogically speaking, because he's made in the image of the divine mind of, of God. He has a mind like God has a mind. He can do uh, logic. He can do moral reasoning and so forth um, like God. So the whole idea of like you know being made in the image of God I'm saying that I'm not saying it's true because it's stated in scripture. I'm saying that the Christian paradigm makes sense as to why it would be that way. So I'm grounding these, these uh, abstract things okay. in the divine mind because the divine mind is, is unique and therefore it's my starting point. My starting point is not a finite human mind because if I go with nominalism and empiricism, I'm stuck in the box of all the limitations and self-refutations that, that empiricism leads to. Yeah, but my and question... So, and, and so, I know, your, your question was, well, how do you prove it? Well, by the impossibility of the contrary. There's no other paradigm that gives a coherent account of all of these things. Okay, good. Right. Okay, this, this is the sort of thing I'm looking for. Um, so, yeah, any other worldview is... which doesn't include the... Uh, Orthodox Christian God as, as the sort of foundation right. or the or the transcendental precondition, whatever, leads to absurdity or is right. impossible. And so the question is, how do you, in order to back up that claim, right, you're going to have to assume for any arbitrary view, which doesn't include the Orthodox Christian God as a necessary precondition, um, you're going to have to derive some sort of contradiction or absurdity. Right. right? So how do you... How do you do that? I mean, what is the argument for that? Well, I mean, there are limited numbers of uh, steps that you can go in any worldview. There's not an infinite number of worldviews if we think of starting points. Now, I mean, conceivably, there could be, I guess, an infinite number of variations down the line in people's worldviews. But every worldview has a limited number of places that it can go when you start with, um, you know, the... The basic questions of metaphysics, the basic questions of epistemology, and the basic questions of ethics, right? That makes up a worldview. And there's not an infinite number of ways that you can answer the basics of those, those uh, disciplines. So, you know, does the external world exist or not? <laughs> Is there, uh, uh, are there objective ethics or not? Uh, you know, it, you're limited actually in the number of ways that you can go. And, you know, in terms of uh, worldviews, we're also, at least in the ones that we typically interact with. We're not usually interacting with that many worldviews. Most worldviews, for example, start out with um, basic principles of monism or dualism. Uh, um, now, Christianity is unique because it's neither monist nor dualist. It has a more uh, nuanced tiered system to reality. But just for example, like hierarchy of being and stuff like that? Or is that what you're talking about? Say what? Like hierarchy of being and stuff like that? Or, is, or are you talking about something else? Well, I'm just using metaphysics as an example of the okay. fact that typically when you interact in, a, in an apologetic way with other religions, you find that there's not actually that many different positions on something like what is the fundamental nature of reality? Is it all one thing or is it all two things? And that's why a lot of ancient religions have been either monistic or dualistic. And I'm just using that as an example to show that if, if you look at the metaphysics of any system, most of the time they're either monistic or dualistic in a lot of religions, right? So I don't know, I don't have to refute every single infinite worldview because there's a limited number well, of ways you can go. So, I mean, even if we suppose that there's only a limited number of possible worldviews, I'm not sure that there is. It seems we could have any number of um, okay, how, if I, if I ask but, basic, Hold on, so if I ask basic questions in metaphysics, um, how, how many different ways do you think those questions can be answered? For example, but, uh, but, is there an but, external world or not? Like, is there an infinite right. number of ways to answer that question? No, perhaps not, right? But but that's not what I'm saying, right? I, well, uh, I was well, willing to I grant that there are a limited question, number of worldviews. You ask the question of how do you not have to refute all possible worldviews? And I'm saying that because every worldview is limited in its beginning starting point steps. 
So so what, right? I mean, you have to have. So all I have to do the contract all I have is to correct do, because all I have to do is refute those starting points, and the whole paradigm falls apart. Yeah, as long as that um, refuting those starting points refutes all other possible worldviews, right? But there, because but you're saying that worldviews contrary world to the Christian view, theism because, are impossible. Because it, you're not understanding the limitations of philosophy. Like every worldview is limited in the beginning points of where you can go. So there's not an infinite number of worldviews in terms of starting points. There's maybe an infinite number of variations down the line. But again, this sure. is like, if you just look at comparative religion, you'll find that most religions in the world historically are either monistic or dualistic. Now, not every single one. I'm just giving that as one example of an easy way to cancel out almost all of the other religions out there. Right, so I can agree. Uh, just depending on what you mean by starting points, right? If, if, if worldview starting points is just going to be responses to some basic metaphysical questions, then of course, yeah, there's going to be a limited number of starting points. Well, I mean, you're saying then, of course, as if uh, that wasn't clear. I mean, what, what, what else would a worldview starting point mean than what I said? No, but I was talking about worldviews, like, um, some, some particular, not just about starting points, but, but. It doesn't matter. Again, right? it doesn't matter whether point, you're a Buddhist or whether you're a Hindu, or whether you're a Muslim, or whether you're an atheist, or whether you're a mm -hmm. New Ager. Everybody's going to have to answer and go in a limited number of either or steps at the beginning of their worldview. Sure, that's fine. I mean, we can we can grant that and suppose that this restricts okay, the number well, of possible if you, if worldviews you, if that If you grant have. that, then your original contention that I have to refute every worldview doesn't hold. Well, yes, it does, right? Because if those are the only w ways that worldviews can be, then those are still all the worldviews, right? And you, it was well, your you claim, right? There's like an infinite number of worldviews. I have to refute them all or something. Well, uh, I mean, I do think there's an infinite number of possible worldviews, but that, that's not starting really points. relevant, right? Look, if I, if I refute, right. let me give you an example. Okay. If, if a position starts out with um, like a basic assumption that all reality is uh, purely relativistic. And there's many worldviews, many religions that hold to that, right? That there's no epistemic certitude or certain truth. Everything is purely relative. And I refute that proposition by pointing out that that proposition itself is a truth claim that, that claims to be absolute and, a, and universal. And it doesn't matter whether that person is a, uh, a skeptic atheist or whether that person is a... Uh, uh, you know, believes in Maya, everything's illusory, or just some random dude on the street who's, you know, taking philosophy 101 and believes everything's relative, that refutes all those worldviews, because that's a basic epistemic story. Sure. So, I agree, right? Well, at least with the general approach. Suppose, I can suppose that you can disprove entire classes of worldviews, right? All of those that have right. um, one of these problematic responses to these metaphysical questions, right? But that's not going to be enough refuting some number of worldviews is not going to be enough to demonstrate your claim unless you can refute all of the worldviews which are not Christian theism. I mean, that's your claim. You're claiming that the, the, the alternatives are impossible. Well, that's one part of the argument. The argument is not just a negative reductio. I'm also positing a positive uh, uh, paradigm that's to be compared with any other paradigm. Okay, and, then you can do that and, after, but you said this was your claim, and you have to... It doesn't matter whether you, you do it before or after, you can do it either way, because sure, the argument whatever. is still the same, which, whichever chronological uh, starting point you use, the argument doesn't change. Sure, you're just so, giving yourself an extra burden there. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess the second one is not really needed if you can already show that the rest are incoherent or impossible, because... Then again, again, if yours I, is coherent I, 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 or not, then... Right, a, so what I'm doing is comparing paradigms and sure. everybody has a paradigm and if I unless you want to be like uh, I'm not saying you but hypothetically unless the person wants to be a, a sophist and be like oh well I don't have to accept any position in uh, epistemology ethics and metaphysics well if you do that then you can't debate and you can't argue anything so that kind of like super agnostic relativism can't even come to mm. the table so yeah, uh, by necessity uh, if you accept that philosophy is, you know, basically what we mean is a worldview, a paradigm. Um, again, you are very much limited in those three domains. I don't, I don't know how else to say this. Uh, you know, if if somebody makes a really, really extremely strong statement like all truth is relative, 
I mean, that completely destroys the possibility of knowledge at all. And that knocks out a gigantic portion of worldviews. Right. Yeah. So I can, I can agree for the sake of argument that relativism about truth is incoherent or something like right. that. And that any worldview which is relativist about truth is, is false for that reason. Well, let's just grant okay. that, sure. I mean, and, and and I you could argue that about a bunch of other things too. But unless okay. you can argue that about uh, in a way which um, applies to all other worldviews, you haven't demonstrated the falsehood, let alone the impossibility of the contrary. If the, no, because that's, if the, if what we're arguing over makes knowledge itself impossible, then it is a cancellation of all the other worldviews. That's why I don't have to go into all the specifics because everybody has a few basic places that they have to start in their worldview, period. Yeah. Like, so you, I was you, right. ha you have yeah. to, that's why I listed the transcendental preconditions. That's what we're talking mm -hmm. about here. Right, so how many worldviews can give an account for those? Well, you're saying that there's only one. That's that's right. your claim. So how do you demonstrate that? By challenging it and going up against any other worldview or critiquing yeah. any of the erroneous positions in the starting points. You're, no, going have to you're going to have to demonstrate that there are no basic starting points for worldviews if you're going to uphold the argument you're trying to make. No. So yes, you are. You're, let me give me a minute. You're, no, claiming you're still trying that, to argue that there's an infinite variation of worldviews, and until I demonstrate every no, single one of them, no, I mean, all whatever. Right. Let's let's suppose that there's no, some finite whatever. number. That's it makes no argument. difference. Well, no, I mean it's in, it's inconsequential. I mean, if you want to argue about how many different possible it's worldviews there are, I'll argue yes, that there are infinitely are many, limited, but it doesn't matter. It does matter because there's a limited number of starting points, and the starting points are intimately connected to, and oftentimes are, preconditions of knowledge. Okay. There, if so, there are preconditions that we're debating over, there's not an infinite number of ways you can try to argue out of that. Sure. I mean, there's, there's two different things we're talking about at this point, right? We're talking about worldviews as a whole and the like starting points of, right. in, in, in people's worldviews. I could grant that there's a finite number of like possible starting points, whatever that means exactly, but still think there's an infinite number of possible worldviews. I mean, you world say views. whatever that means exactly. I've defined it exactly multiple times for you. Ethics, metaphysics, epistemology, there's a limited number of places that we can get. Let's take ethics, right? I mean, there's either sure. objective ethics or there aren't, right? Right. Or yeah, maybe you think it's both, right? So, that, so that's what, a couple different places you could go with that? Uh, sure. I mean, there's a lot of more questions okay, we can have on those think, things and you don't think that, that you most... might classify starting points. Okay. And I don't know why you're, 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 you're taking issue with whether that's a starting point. I mean, it doesn't matter no, if, you want to, if you want to pick a different thing, like, can you know ethical propositions? Right. Uh, it, yeah. Like, either of those could be saying, so I'm just saying basic positions or maxims within a philosophical system. It right, my point there was just, there was, it's a little bit vague about what you're including as a starting point, even if you're talking about ethics, epistemology, and metaphysics, whatever. Well, I, I mean, mean, you want more examples? I, but, I mean, I gave you, you said it's no, vague. I gave you multiple examples. I said most religions fall into monism or dualism. That's a basic right. physical position that most positions fall into from the outset. Yeah, there's, it's, not it's, a lot of op there's not a lot of options for people to go there. Like if you're a materialist, right. uh, you're, you pretty much believe in uh, monism. Sometimes there are materialists that believe that there are essences or higher level abstract entities. And so that's dualistic. Uh, okay, so the, uh, it's fine enough that your clarification on starting points is, is good enough, right? Because it, it's more or less like irrelevant to the point I'm trying to make. Uh, it's your claim, right? That um, no, it's not irrelevant. Any other you're, you're, you're arguing like okay. this is a foundationalist type of argument. Like mm -hmm. until I empirically demonstrate that every worldview is false my argument won't hold that only assumes well, that that foundationalism is true and i'm not i'm a presuppositionalist so i'm making a presuppositional argument i'm cutting through a lot of the bullshit and saying that none of that stuff ultimately matters if i can demonstrate something that's prior to empirical uh is he cutting out or is this just me uh no he's cutting out uh, jay you're kind of cutting out a little cut bit that out from under people then that yeah, like, audio just cut out for a little bit might go out a little bit this Okay, yeah, he just lagged out. Um, he'll be back, though. Hello, Jay? Is that better? No. Uh, no, you're still lagging a little bit. 
Um, Jay, Jay can you still hear us fine, though? Can you still hear Destroyer you... fine? Oh, did you just disconnect again? No, he's still here. Uh, I just want to make sure that you don't... Yes, I give can your... hear. I'm just waiting. Okay. I'm waiting until I get past this point okay. in, the tr in the road. Where it... Maybe you give me a minute to kind of clarify what yeah, criticism you want, I'm making. Yeah, if you want to clarify your position, and maybe my connection will get better. Yeah, so you made the claim earlier that your the way you demonstrate your conclusion that the Christian God is the necessary precondition for these uh, what you call transcendental categories is by the impossibility of the contrary, which is just to say that these other any other worldview or which doesn't include the Christian God or the Orthodox Christian God as a precondition for these things um, is absurd. It leads to a contradiction. It's incoherent. And um, what I've been asking is a demonstration of that claim, right? How do you get from, uh, how do you get to the conclusion that for any other worldview, um, that it leads to a contradiction? Because that's your claim. And if, and then you started talking about, um, well, all these other worldviews have a certain number of limited starting points, right? Um, I could agree with that. Um, but if that's going to demonstrate your claim, you'd have to say something like this. Um, Orthodox Christianity has a particular response to those starting points, which are unique to Orthodox Christianity, and every other response on those starting points leads to contradiction. You could do something like that, but and if that's, that's your no approach, I'm going to no be looking for the argument. argument dude. That's no different than a transcendental argument. Right, but then make the argument, right? I mean, you have to demonstrate the claim. Yeah, I am demonstrating the claim by pointing out that we don't have fundamental contradictions that destroy the possibility of knowledge the other worldviews have contradictory claims that destroy the possibility of knowledge. That is the argument. Great. So um, the premise that the other worldviews, and remember that I assume you mean all non-Orthodox Christian worldviews. Correct. Uh, entail the <laughs> impossibility of, of knowledge or something like that. Correct. Okay. So how do we show that that's the case? Because they have fundamental flaws at the beginning of their positions that destroy the possibility of knowledge, and they can't give an account for the things they use. That is the argument. Do you not understand that that is an argument? Well, it's uh, claims, which it is an argument, right? This premises and conclusion. But I'm okay. I'm, so, do you deny that? I'm doubting the premises themselves. Do you deny that transcendental arguments are valid forms of argumentation? Well, of course they are. They're valid. Okay, then and you shouldn't object to the argument because you're, if it's a valid form of argument. Wait, hang on, but you can argument. object to the premises of a valid argument. One of your premises is, was that all other worldviews um, okay, so entail okay, the impossibility of knowledge. Coherent. But that's not my claim, right? Your claim is that all other no, worldviews... claim because what, what worldview debates and uh, transcendental argumentation is about is about worldviews. So I'm comparing my worldview to your worldview, which you haven't said what your worldview is yet. Because you're not making an argument, you're just trying to hypothetically find a flaw in the in my position. My argument Hang on a second. Simple. Why is my worldview relevant to your claim that all yeah, of the worldviews it's worldview don't... Presupposit because it's a worldview debates question. It's my paradigm versus your paradigm. And now you're trying to switch it into classical foundationalist debates as if it's just a question of going through the different positions one by one. No. Now, if you want, so, okay. No, can, you you want give an account, to... can you give an account for the things that I've listed at the beginning of the debate? Uh, sure. I mean, I can talk about some of my views on give those Give an account. Things. That's we can what do we're that. here to do. Hang that's on. What we're here to... that's Hang what on. No, it isn't. That's what the debate is about, dude. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. So, we can get into that, but that's not what the debate was about, and no, it's not, so wouldn't demonstrate I'm, I'm, your claim, I'm getting ahead of even you if because I'm heading you found you a flaw in my view. Listen, I'm heading you off to explain that for your argument to work, what you're doing, mm -hmm. you're going to need to prove classical foundationalism. That's what you're going to have to do. So all I have to do is go back to pointing out the five major self-contradictions of a classical empiricist type of worldview. Well, I don't really consider myself a foundationist, not really in the traditional sense, okay, but that's but not where your relevant. argument to, it is because you're not understanding paradigms. You're trying to trap me on. You're, no, I basically, do. you're saying that there aren't paradigm level questions that, that prove and disprove paradigms. That's what you're having to say. You're not explicitly saying that, but for your argument to work, that's what you have to say. 
Sure. So, what, but your argument was, or your claim was, all other worldviews uh, lead to a contradiction, or at least Correct. are incompatible with, with knowledge. They're, they destroy the possibilities of knowledge. That's different. Right. And when I asked you for um, a demonstration of that, at that point you're saying, okay, what's your Do you not example understand the that the demonstration view? is the multiple examples I've already given? And then you turn around and say, well, give me an example. Give me a demonstration. No, 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 no. How many more do you need? Enough to rule out all other worldviews, which is just what your claim is. So because consider this, all, right? Because all other worldviews are Hang limited on. in their starting points. And if they start with basic contradictions, and they all do, I've, the, the argument okay. holds. You're, you're saying that they all do. That's the, right. question, the premise that I'm not convinced of. How do yeah, you so, show that so, all of the other worldviews start with contradictions? Because there's a limit. And it's not going to be enough. Places. Sorry, sorry. There's a limited number of places that any possible worldview can go. Don't you understand that? I agree. Yeah. Um, can I just, if I could just interject really quick, I think you guys at this point are at an impasse on this issue. I, I think um, when it comes to this, I think what Jay's obviously, for people who might not understand, Jay's saying basically only Orthodox Christianity can make sense of reality um, and can actually ground these categories of our experience that are needed. And Detroyer is saying that there's a burden of proof for that claim that Jay can't Correct. meet. And, Jay, what, and what Jay is saying is that we can sort of Although there's different numerators, there's sort of a common denominator, right? Yes. Would that be only, a proper characterization? Yes. It doesn't matter what your different worldview is, how many you can choose all, choose, pick 32 different flavors. It doesn't matter because all I have to do is ask you the basic questions of epistemology, metaphysics, and ethics, and you're going to destroy yourself. So, okay. Um, and that's why you won't present your, war, war, your own worldview. Hang on. I can present because some I will easily dissect your worldview. Uh, we can do that. We will do that in a few that, minutes. That's what you don't want that's to do. Not you don't point. actually have a challenge. No, I don't mind. Then no, let's do Hang that. on. We will do that, but that's not, <laughs> this is not the point of the debate. So it let, is the let's point. be the very clear. Debate, the, the, the hang on, hang on. Is, No, the debate no, is the comparison it, of paradigms. You're going to have to prove that there aren't limited numbers of paradigms. No. So suppose that I present some of my views on these these matters, and you demonstrate some problem in my view and it's really okay. convincing right you, you don't understand that really it's not convincing. just some problem you don't understand the difference between a paradigm level problem and just no, a I do, logical right? conundrum right no we can suppose okay, that it's so paradigm you it really destroys that, my worldview if you understood that you wouldn't be keep you wouldn't keep making the argument based on a misunderstanding or on a flawed uh, argumentation no. that i have no. to demonstrate every other worldview is false no i don't because every other worldview can be boiled down to a limited number of options in each of these positions. Very limited. Wait, hang on. You you said every other worldview is impossible. Certainly, you Correct. must think it's that's also they're also false. So that's also a burden you've taken. Yes, I'm not shying the burden. I'm telling you how that's done. Right, but one the way that isn't done is by taking one worldview or a few worldviews at a time and refuting them. Right. Yes, it is because that, as, I've, as I've explained to you about twenty times. There's a limited number of places for any worldview to start. You had a problem with starting points because you don't understand paradigms. No, I understand yes, paradigms and starting no, points. No, I, I, I got some clarification making, on what you things you're You wouldn't be making the argument you're making if you understood paradigms. Well, then what is my misunderstanding then? I mean, I'm asking... Once again... We can grant that there's these limited once starting again, points. There, are, there are a limited number of options for mm -hmm. any possible worldview in the basic areas right. of philosophy. And if you sure. keep saying right and keep saying sure, then don't turn around and say that I have to refute every possible worldview. Wait, but because but, that doesn't make sense, dude. Wait, but yes, you can, right? So, so here's the sort of argument I thought I, I said can this at one point. Every possible worldview that you put forward, because all I have to do is boil them down to the basic starting points where they mess up. Do you not right? But if if you can show that all those other Throw answers, them up, put them up, put them up. Hang on. Hang okay. If you can show that all of the worldviews go wrong at some point on those basic questions, Correct. right? Then you can you've given some sort of reductio against all other worldviews. Correct. Right? You don't have to take them one at a time Correct. because they all go wrong on these starting points, and, and so they're all false. Yeah, but I said right. you still have to name an an example of a worldview. But that's not how you demonstrate that claim, right? Yes, it's, it's it not is. enough to say this worldview is false and this worldview is false. 
when your claim is that all of these worldviews are false, right? Unless you have some, unless you can go yes, through one by is. one. No, again, if you say this again, I'm going to have to just point it out again that you've already admitted that I don't have to go through them one by one. When well, you I don't, can boil right? them down, right? So I can boil them down to the basic presuppositions. That's paradigm level argumentation. You don't understand paradigms. So I, I understand that you don't have to go through them one by one. In fact, I, I would prefer that you don't didn't turn because that's say that I have to. <laughs> no, I like, prefer well, prefer that you didn't because that's never going to demonstrate your claim unless you would go through each of them one by one. That what you want to do right, is, so look, is sort uh, of conceptual let's, argument. Let's, let's stop here. A presupposition that I have, and mm -hmm. I think it's a correct presupposition, is that all everybody has a belief system, sure. right? a philosophy of life. And there are very limited numbers of ways that they can go in the questions that start off starting points, basic maxims. Mm -hmm. You've already admitted that that's the case. And sure. since you admit that that's the case, I do not have to refute every single possible worldview because they all deviate and derive from those basic principles and maxims that start the argument. Wait, wait, but, but you so would be refuting all those worldviews by doing that. Muslim, I would be what? So, so let me, so this, this is, is kind of the point I thought you this might is total take. sophistry. Like you're not making an argument. You're not putting up anything. What? So let me, let me, uh, state what I thought your approach would be, right? So you you're agree not here to that there's a bunch of you're basic here to critique tag. That's fine. Sure. But the argument is about paradigms and you're saying, I don't have a paradigm. I just question paradigms. I never said that. Well, that's what you're so doing. let me. Well, I'm questioning your your um, I don't, argument, right, your claim. It's, it's, but I'm not, you're not you're contradicting because you're saying that I don't have to disprove every worldview. You admit that they boil down to basic presuppositions, and that's why I say yes. They will all they will all err because there's a limited number of ways. There's only no. let me put it simply for you. There's about I don't know. Let let me ad hoc boil it down to I don't know eight different possibilities that you could have in like say something like metaphysics or ethics. Sure. Every so, that's that's a limitation by the nature of this world and by the late the nature of human limitations of infinitude that that's all the options you have. So that's not an infinite variation. Right, the variation sure. comes down the line after those starting points are granted. Right. Okay. So let's suppose it's eight. Yeah, maybe it's saying right, more, more if you more. keep saying right, okay, then don't turn around and, and contradict it. Uh huh. So let's suppose it's eight, maybe it's a little bit more, a little bit less, whatever. It's not really relevant exactly how many there are, but there's some relatively small finite number okay. um, of different possible answers on these starting points. Um, is this the sort of argument you want to make? So yes, um, Orthodox Christianity has a particular response to each of those questions that is unique to Orthodox Correct. Christianity. And all other responses to those basic questions lead to contradictions or they lead to the impossibility of knowledge itself not merely a contradiction all and right if you understood the paradigms you would know that that's what we're arguing we're not just arguing sure. there's a contradiction any possible argument can contradict there could be a contradiction in anybody's worldview about something stupid like you know do they live next door to little wayne i mean that's yeah, but they could contradict on that that's different yeah it, but it's, it's a contradiction on some fundamental level and in, on the like worldview level paradigm and that's level, what we're right? talking about that's what we're talking about Sure. Yeah. So, okay. You're saying, do I really this want is to good so argument? far. Yes, I do. Great. Great. That's good so far. I think I'm getting a little bit more clarity here. But then my question is, that's a two-part question. First of all, I guess it would have to be, what is the response that um, Orthodox Christianity has on each of these matters? And the second part is, why does the other response on each of these matters, or any other response on each of these matters, lead to a contradiction? Or on the worldview level. Maybe to focus in, could we maybe talk about? I think Jay mentioned laws of logic. Maybe what? What about laws of logic and God? Is yeah. you know, Jay, like sure. what about That's logic? A great example. Like God. I said, you know, like, so I got the beginning. I was giving examples of things like abstract entities or, or objects. Uh, if you want to talk about epistemology, uh, I mean, there's no worldview out there that can deny logic, right? And can, and and have a, a rational, coherent basis for reasoning and argumentation. If we're building rockets and doing this kind, of, you know, the kinds of things that logic and math help us do, so there's no there's no worldview out out there that can like deny them or equate them to the material realm. So I already in the opening statement gave multiple examples of the very things that we're 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 using now 
I, I can just repeat it and say that, yeah, so if you try to say that abstract objects are identical to physical matter, uh, if you're a physicalist, if you're a reductionist, uh, all of those positions lead to incoherence and nonsense and destroy the possibility of knowledge. So we have to ground them somewhere. You're limited in the number of options of where you could ground them. I mean, if you want to get creative and say, uh, I want to ground them in um, cheese whiz, uh, you know, and my God is cheese whiz. Okay, but that doesn't, re that doesn't satisfy the conditions for uh, justification, right? But the type of being that we're arguing for does satisfy the conditions of justifying propositions and beliefs precisely because he has the nature, the characteristics, the attributes that would ground that in a coherent worldview, right? So if, again, man is made in the image of God, he has a mind to reason like God, there are abstract categories, logic, etc., that reflect the mind of God, that are grounded in the omniscient mind of God, that underlie all of reality and yet are not identical. Right, I understand that you have a theology, but I'm trying to understand... Um... So we're, we're going to take logic. Um, so you had a, an argument, more or less, to th that uh, uh, my, any, my, my, any plausible my, worldview must think that these are real, that logical laws are true, or something like that? My, my phone cut out. Could you repeat that last time? Sorry. So at the, at the first stage, you were saying something like... Um, it's not a stage. Any... It's just an example. It's not, I'm just giving yeah, but you were just, you're just engaging in a sort of reasoning there. And, and the first part was something like, all worldviews... Um, which aren't like contradict you at, at the paradigm level must suppose that um, these laws of logic are real or something or true or something like that, right? Sure, absolutely. Um, I, was giving, I was giving examples of like why you are limited, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I can't, I could get creative and just come up with crazy stuff, but it's not going to work. That's what I'm trying to say. So he was saying, why don't you use the laws of logic as an example? And I'm saying, okay. Uh, let's talk about the laws of logic. What worldview can make sense of them? And I'm saying that in the Christian paradigm, when you listen, when you you know get the stuff that I said about how we're made in the image of God, we have a mind, we can reason about reality. Uh, the the laws of logic reflect God's mind. They're not identical to the divine mind. They're invariant. They're conceptual. They're not grounded in the human mind, which is also changing, created, in flux, etc. Uh, that is a worldview that can give a ground and a justification for immaterial objects, right? Uh, if you start with empiricism, you can't. So you have, yeah, so on, on your view, you have this explanation for uh, why these things are true and how we can reason according to them. Right, a co um, coherent view, all right? right I'm not saying coherent. that we, we can, like, know every single fact about reality. Uh, no, no worldview can provide that. But in the Christian paradigm, it does make sense how man can reason, reason after God and do these kinds of things. It makes sense in that worldview. In an atheist materialist worldview, it does not make sense. I don't well, know. I, even if I grant that in an atheist, atheist materialist view, it doesn't make sense. Uh, your claim is that in a non-Orthodox Christian view, it doesn't make sense. Correct. And so, um, right. So I'm trying to understand, first of all, why someone has to... Uh, I mean, we can grant that a, a coherent worldview must suppose that these things are true. Um, but why do we have to go any further than that? I mean, why, why can't someone suppose that it's they're true and they're just necessary truths, or that they're grounded some other way? I mean, uh, how are these uh, well, views not only false, but incoherent? Because that would be ad hoc to just say that they're necessarily true and not give a justification for them. Right, but even if it's ad hoc, I mean, so what? That's not incoherence. Uh, actually ad hoc would be incoherent because it's not what? giving a justification. Not giving a justification is, is not absurdity. It's not a contradiction. It's just not giving a justification. Well, if you're coming, but we're in the, we're engaged in a debate in apologetics and sure. in debates and in apologetics, if you want to give a justification for something, then you can't be ad hoc. I mean, you can free will choose to be ad hoc, but that's not a good argument. Well, hang on. Okay, I could grant that if I'm trying to give an argument for something, and all I'm doing is giving ad hoc explanations. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you're then not I fail, contradicting right. by being ad hoc, but that's not explaining right. or giving a justification, and so you're not doing debates or apologetics at that point. You're just doing sophistry. 
No, but I understand. You, you're claiming that all worldviews, whether those people who have those worldviews are engaged in okay, debates if you or want, not. If you want to have a sophistic ad hoc worldview, you can do that, but you're not going to be able to debate and do apologetics. So you have to put the microphone down and leave because you're not here to debate. Because debate pre presupposes that you're going to give an account and justification logically and coherently for your beliefs. Yeah, so I guess there's two things I want to point out. Um, the first is, so I guess you're admitting that so it you being at hard is not that you incoherent. Hey, Jay, can we just let him? Can, can we just let him finish, and then oh, you can go uninterrupted after that? Yeah. So, so two things. Um, you're, it seems to be that you're conceding that it being ad hoc is not absurd or contradictory, um, which I take it is just okay. A so refutation of your main claim. Wait, wait, just second, let, Jay, Jay, just just please let him finish. And and second, I thought on your view as well. There's something which you're not providing justification for. It's the existence of the God in which you believe, right? I mean, that's, you don't have any additional justification for that, or at least it's justified in terms so of you just uh, its coherence you for the rest of your view. You just showed that you don't understand transcendental arguments and you don't understand justification for beliefs because if you understood transcendental arguments, which you claimed you did, you mm -hmm. would know that the transcendental argument is a form of justification. It's a different type of justification. It's not no justification. It's the same mistake Matt Dillahunty made where he just said, oh, presuppositions can't be justified. No, that's not true. They're justified by comparison of paradigms that's why it's a coherentist view and not a foundationalist view no i understand how and you secondly, can use kinds of arguments okay, to look, justify yeah this is sure. not, you're you're moving the definitions of terms and saying that well i'm not contradicting if i come up with an ad hoc worldview yeah but okay. that's not doing apologetics that's not doing debate if you want to debate christianity and the existence of god then you do have to give an account for your beliefs and you can't be ad hoc Okay. That should be obvious. So, I mean, it's sophistical right. of you to argue this. No, no, no. So when when you yes, said yes. <laughs> you said that all other worldviews lead into contradictions if they answer uh, yeah, differently the than orthodox theism. In the context of debates, obviously. So now. What do you mean in the context of debates? You're talking about on terms of we're paradigms. Doing apologetics. Right? That's what comparison of paradigms is. Apologetics. That's what we're doing. We're here to debate. It's a we're, debate. You said right. We're not here right. to uh, do sophistry. Uh, well, I'm trying. You're saying that... Yeah, um, thank you. I know you're trying to do sophistry, exactly. Okay. I'm not sure how else to say this point, right? You're claiming uh, can you give, that... Can you, give, can you give an account for the laws of logic? Just let Detroit finish, and then Detroit, if you want, you can answer that question. Sure. Um, you claim that all the other worldviews... Um, which answer differently on these starting points, metaphysical starting points and ethics, whatever, um, lead to uh, incoherence on the or contradiction on the paradigm level. Yeah, in the context um, of debate, dude, uh, obviously. Well, you're that's just you're changing the claim then. Okay, I'm not sure what in the context of debate saying, means. You're basically saying, I don't want to debate. That's what apologetics is. That's what debate is. Have you ever done a formal debate? Sure, yeah, of course. Uh-huh, really. Okay, let's just, I, I think the about the debate thing is a little off topic. Just to try, just, did you finish out what you were saying, and did you catch Jay's question? Uh, hold on. It's not off topic because this is a question of apologetics. The transcendental argument is an argument for God's existence in the domain of logic. Okay? That's the domain of debate. That's the mm -hmm. domain of apologetics. And so if you're going to come and say, I, what if I don't believe in making arguments? That's sophistry. So, Yeah. So I do believe in making saying. arguments. You just said, you just said JJ, we got to we got to we got to let him we got to let him get it thought it's out. Just it's just a plain counterexample. It's just a plain counterexample to your claim. Your claim is the all worldviews um, which which answer differently on these matters lead to contradiction. Some worldviews don't lead to contradiction on these matters. So your claim is false. I don't know what, what more there is to say. No, this and is it, the, adding this, this, this positive about in the heard. context this of debate is it's just heard. irrelevant. Not, now you just admitted that it's a debate, but then you said you're not debating by just replying ad hoc. So Are you saying it's not debate. a counterexample to your claim, or, or is it a counterexample? It's a counterexample that doesn't apply to debate, and we're here to debate. But it, whether it applies to debate or not, is it a counterexample to your claim? We're here to do apologetics. So you're, it's, so it's apples and oranges, dummy. No, you may hey, let's not let's not insult the... people's character or insult, insult people's intelligence, guys. Okay, yeah. then let's uh, not Jay. engage in sophistry because you, you're not arguing. You're not. I, I think it. and I it's think fine if you think that, but but Detroyer's been good enough to come on and debate, and and okay. I think he's just trying to finish a point. So let's just you're, let him finish it. Give me thirty seconds. Now look, this is not 
an argument. What you're trying to do is sophistry. If you just if you say that all I have to do is say ad hoc, and therefore I am I'm getting out of your claim that worldviews are contradictory. That's not getting out of the claim because the worldviews are contradictory in the domain of debate and logic. And to bow out of debate and logic, which is what saying I'm just going to be ad hoc does, means that you're no longer debating. That should be obvious. That's why it's sophistry. Um, no. So when we're t- I'll just repeat what, the comment that Jay, 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 you gotta, Jay, Jay, you have to let him finish. Go ahead, Joshua. So um, it's important to note, right, that when I'm talking about these possible worldviews, I'm not saying anything about what I'm committed to or my particular worldview. Yeah, because you, you, yeah, I know. We can move into that, my views on some of the these issues. But the claim is just this. You claimed that um, all other non-Orthodox Christian views uh, uh, go wrong on these uh, uh, starting points of, in, in terms you, of metaphysics, ethics, and so forth. Do you understand what giving an account? Giving an account. Let, let me finish the point. Yeah, 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 just just let him. Finish. No, yeah, I'm I promise not, you'll be able to go interrupted. Not, no, if he's not going to give he's, an account, then I'm not going to keep doing this. He, because well, he's, he's just responding to account. the. He's just trying to we're clarify here, his point not, about the about his weird, particular weird argument, and then after that he can, and then after that we'll shift to that and. We can get into okay. that, but just let Joshua finish up his thoughts on that. Okay. Okay. Ahead, we have these sort of metaphysical, epistemological, ethical starting points, and, and the questions about them that all worldviews have to answer. And we can grant that. Um, and your claim was that worldviews, which don't give the uniquely orthodox Christian worldviews, uh, lead to absurdity and coherence. And you said. And then when I brought up an example of, well, what if someone just supposes that these things, even if it's ad hoc, that these things are necessary, um, you said, well, okay, uh, at first you said ad, ad hoc is incoherent, and then and then you seem to walk that back and say, well, it's not incoherent, it, no, it but is, in the context no, of debate. No, you're misrepresenting me. It's incoherent if you're going to try to debate with that position. Don't you get that? Do you, you don't understand what a justification is for a claim? Yeah, I, I get what the justification is. Um, no, you don't, because then, because then you couldn't argue for ad hoc stuff. I know that's not your position; it's your hypothetical position. But that's it's not, not even my hypothetical argue. position. We're just talking about you different worldviews. You are world making a like... hypothetical position. Come on, dude, this is ridiculous. You're making in the sense that we're talking about possible worldviews. In that sense, oh it's a God. hypothetical yes, position. Sure. Yes. Yes. So that's not giving an account or justification, and that's what we're here to do. Sure, you're giving a justification for the claim that all the worldviews lead to contradiction. This is just, even if it's an ad hoc and the person couldn't debate using this worldview, um, it's still not it's a contradiction. Not, it's not relevant. It's not How relevant. is that not? Because but it's still a worldview. Debate, it's still a counterexample to your thing. I don't, I don't, there's just no way around this. No, the, you don't understand basic logic and justification for claims. This is irrelevant to a debate. I don't understand. It's, it's straightforward counterexample to your claim. An ad hoc reply is irrelevant. I'm just going to reply to you, God exists. And you're going to say that's ad hoc. If you can be ad hoc, then you're, that's a logical fallacy, goofus. Ad hocness is a logical fallacy? But, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that? It, it's not, but <laughs> that's not. Is a logical fa- ad, being ad hoc is absolutely a logical fallacy. I'm not even going to take that bait. You're the- gonna, you just <laughs> lost the debate. Ad hocness is a lot. All right, Detroit. Right, let, so let's try to focus in. Like, uh, let's try yeah, to really focus yeah. in. Jay, are you is this just, like just really quick, guys? Just really quick. I, I want to like. I, I don't think Detroit. You ever really got a chance to answer right. Jay's no, question no, about. See, well, I want to say, say no, like two more points about this. If he is going to say ad hoc is not a fallacy, the debate is over. Come on. It's not a logical fallacy. I'll just let. Okay, if, if that's how it is, then we'll we'll let. Just let Detroit. Make you two more point, points. Try to make them quick, and then um, if you remember Jay's question, if not, he can re-ask it. But uh, okay. try to respond to that. So Dude, this is the dumbest debate I've ever had. You, you're worse than Mark Brahman. You literally think that being ad hoc is not a. Fall- it's so, not a logical fallacy. Jay, I, I'm sorry. I had to. You, you just gotta let him finish. Um, All right. I apologize um, that you feel that way. So yeah it feels like we've we've hit a roadblock here because your claim was that all of the worldviews lead to contradiction um and then we discussed the possible worldview is a basic logic fallacy hang on even if the worldview is 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 ad hoc or or certain beliefs that the person has if they were to hold that worldview at ad hoc 
does it just doesn't matter to the claim that it's in, uh, contradictory, that it's incoherent. Your claim is that it's incoherent, not just that it's it would you're have done, to be ad hoc. You're done. Incoherent. You lost when you said it wasn't a fallacy. You're like Mark Brahman. You did the exact same. Thing. Hang on. No, is it a so fallacy first of all, whether, I want you to I want you to reaffirm it for the fifteenth time that it's not ad hoc claims is not a logical fallacy. I'll right. say that as many times as you want. That's, you not, that's not true. It's a basic fallacy you just lost. It's not a what? What are ad logical ad fallacies? Ad is a basic logic fallacy. This is so. Dumb. Uh -huh. So yeah, this is getting into the weeds. Let's let's uh, both this of us. Not the weed. First of all, this is ad, not the weed. Whether ad hoc is a fallacy? Is, is, yeah, it like. Yeah. You guys I'm obviously down. both think that each other's position on this are I'm absurd. Done. And you've this been... is totally retarded. I'm not debating over a basic logic policy that any any so, logic one on one guy would know. Uh huh. Okay. I mean, well, Detroit, I how about, how about you just give uh, a response? Even though it's to false, that he's, he's, he's left. Give me he's a second. Left. I could grant, even though it isn't true, that uh, providing ad hoc responses is a logical fallacy. Whatever. We could. I could grant that. But that's either way. That's not what I'm doing. Right. It's not like my response, my criticism of your argument is as ad hoc. I'm pointing out a counterexample. That's anything but ad hoc, right? Um, and so whether the <laughs> the person who would hold that worldview, that hypothetical worldview, would have to engage in ad hoc reasoning in order to come to believe it is just um, irrelevant to the point. It's a worldview that they could have, which is not incoherent. And that just is a straightforward counterexample to your claim. And I've just given heard no response to that counterexample at all. Yeah. I apologize, Ashura. He he has left the uh, left left the voice chat. Um, I don't know. If, I I think he just left. I don't think he is interested in the debate anymore. Um, yeah, that was going nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I'm not just to answer. Maybe for some people who are interested, Jay asked, "How do you ground the laws of logic, and how would you go about doing that, or do you think they they need a grounding or whatever?" Just to sort of wrap it up. Yeah, that's a tricky question. Um... Um, I'm, I'm not entirely opposed to, um, like when we say that, that these laws of logic are true, um, it's, it's, it's very mysterious about what it would be that makes them true. I mean, even on, even on versions of theism, I don't, I'm not sure, um, what it is that would make them true. Um, and so I'm somewhat open to possibilities of, of pluralism or even, or even some sorts of nihilism about about these claims. I don't have a, a solid answer on on what, first of all, whether these are um, true propositions, mind independently, and what it is uh, that is the truth maker for those claims. So, yeah, I don't have any strong opinions on on that matter. Right. I appreciate the answer. Um, I appreciate coming on, Detroit. It was really fun to see you debate. Um, I would say to Jay, but unfortunately, Jay has left. Um, so do you do you mind if I start on muting people a little bit? Uh, just people who might have questions. If anyone has questions, yeah, sure. I'm open to having any, any. Yeah. So if anyone has questions for Detroyer specifically, uh, well, I, I, Jay was I, here. You can ask in the chat. I unmuted Helios. But yeah, I unmuted Helios because he's been going off in the chat that like Detroyer doesn't have a worldview. <laughs> so I think rather than just like talking shit in the text chat like um, a little boy, why don't you speak up, Helios, and like uh, engage with Detroyer? Yeah, I mean, I assumed if we, we would have been able to get past this point that we would have started discussing some of my views on the real, uh, the various categories that he brought up. Um, but we couldn't get past this point because it was just, I mean, it was just absurd. Yeah. So. It's, a, it's a point that's brought up quite a lot. I think um, Alex Mal, I'm not an atheist, but Alex Malpass has a very good article that goes over Detroit's like basic objection. And there's also responses to that too. Um, but... Yeah, sure. It's um, pretty interesting. But, I mean, do you think that he even began to give some response? I mean, no, 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 no. I don't personally, but um, <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't be asking the moderator. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just. I, I I don't think it was really a debate, honestly, between like on either side. I think it was, but anyway. Um, hey, will that helio? Maybe explain uh, what ad hocness is, because I I'm confused. I was kind of confused by that, by the dis by that like fundamental disagreement that you and him had about ad, ad hoc being a. A fallacy or that, not a fallacy. He was, that, he was just using that as a way to escape. What are you talking about? That wasn't a fallacy. That was just like him thinking, oh, I've got to pull the parachute cord to get out of here. Hey, uh, Troy. Sorry. Sorry. Do you want me to talk about ad hoc or? Yeah, just really quick. Like, is it like what, what exactly is ad hocness? Uh, well, why is it, or is it not a fallacy? 
it's not a logical fallacy, at least. Whether we want to say that in the context of a debate, um, whether it could be an informal fallacy is another matter. Um, but ad hoc in general is, is um, this is got a super imprecise explanation, but it's, it's, it's giving an explanation for something just to serve some other purpose or without kind of good justification or reason for doing so beyond just to serve whatever purpose you want. Something like that, right? I mean, yeah, not a super precise definition, but that's kind of what I have in mind when we talk about ad hoc justifications. And um, when we're talking about uh, logical fallacies, um, especially formal logical fallacies, that's going to be some um, uh, flaw in the logical structure of an argument, or in some case, um, a flaw in not necessarily the logical structure, but some sort of dialectical flaw in the um, in its application or something like that. that something about uh, informal fallacies generally take a structure like that. Um, but it just seems to me that with that definition for ad hocness doesn't really, I mean, ad hoc explanations may not even need to be given in the context of that a sort of dialectical situation. So I'm not, um, in that sense, how could it even classify as a logical fallacy? And even if it is, I'm, I'm not sure why we would classify it as a logical fallacy in all cases. So, I mean, but I, this that, that point about how we classify um, uh, ad hoc explanations is just so unimportant. And I don't understand why he got so upset over that, except well, as an escape route. But yeah, right. It's it's it's, abs it's absolutely an escape route. Okay, I don't like to read people's minds, but there's times when it's just obvious. He did the same thing when I debated him. He tried to get me saying that we should do something, and then imply that I believe, well, we we should be logical. There's some reason beyond a hypo norm for that, etc. Right? He'll just try to find some greasy thing to weasel out with. Uh, Troy, I made an image actually um, of this. Uh, debate and lots of people were spamming it and i'd just like to yeah, I get, saw it. I get saw your it. take yeah. on it um so i just wrote out roughly the way you characterize his argument it's just modus ponens premise one if all other worldviews are contradictory then the christian worldview is true premise two all other worldviews are contradictory conclusion therefore the christian worldview is true i just wrote your reply which is what's the argument for p2 and i tried to show what jay needs to do which is actually give an argument, as in premises and a conclusion, where the conclusion is that second premise, that all other worldviews are contradictory. Right, exactly. And and it seemed like the route he wanted to take at one point was, um, well, okay, we can kind of, yeah, there's many, many, many possible worldviews that people could have, but um, each of those worldviews will have some response to these kind of basic starting point questions and so forth. And so if we can show that some... Uh, responses to these basic starting point questions are lead to incoherence on the like paradigm level or as you put it then we can show that all the worldviews that give those responses are false without kind of going through one by one and so if that's the approach he's going to take what he's what he's the project he's setting up for himself is um showing that first of all listing out the responses that his worldview has on those matters um uh orthodox christianity whatever it was and, and then sh demonstrating that every other uh, combination of responses to those uh, problems leads to incoherence on the worldview level and that his is the only world uh, view that, that um, gives the responses that he does, right? There's no other worldview that has the same similar starting points but is an Orthodox Christianity. So those, those two basic projects he had. And all he could seem to do is, at that point in the discussion was, well, okay, now let's talk about you know, your individual worldview or any whatever worldview you want to put forth. And that's not, I mean, even if he could demonstrate that that worldview or worldviews were false, it would get almost no closer to demonstrating his claim. So, that, I mean, that's, and he just either did not understand or wasn't willing to um, engage with that, that, that burden he took. Well, yeah, and he was he was quibbling with you over various orthogonalities. Like, for example, he was trying to quibble over, well, are there an infinite amount of other worldviews or is there a finite amount? And it's like, well, that's unimportant, right? Because regardless of what right. the number is, you're claiming that they're all impossible. So you tell me what the number is. That's fine. I don't care. Just show that they're all impossible. That's the task you've set yourself, irrespective of what the number may be. Yeah, of course. And... And demonstrating that 
if he can, that a particular worldview leads to incoherence. And the one case is where the case where um, we talked about a res uh, an alternative response to one of those fundamental questions, which on his view should have led to incoherence, he admitted that it didn't lead to incoherence, it was merely ad hoc. And so um, not only was he not able to demonstrate his full claim, uh, as he started to do so, we already had a counterexample to his claim. So it just seemed, uh, I don't know, hopeless. Right. So I might I might have missed that part of the dialectic, but you said that he gave an example, called it uh, ad hoc, uh, and then actually you you pointed out ad hoc isn't incoherent, and he said, okay, yeah, it's right. not incoherent. It's just ad hoc. That, that's what happened. Oh, but then he's saying that his claim is if, false, right? Because right, we have because, this worldview exactly. that's not orthodox Christianity, it's <laughs> not incoherent. Right. That's that's him. In fact, that's actually him contradicting himself, right? That's uh, you can right. make a universally quantified statement for all x of x is a worldview other than Christianity then uh, X contains a contradiction, and then uh, there exists an X such that X is a worldview other than Christianity, and X does not contain a contradiction, because it's just ad hoc. Right? That's a direct logical contradiction. He contradicted himself. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty straightforwardly. I mean, yep. and the funny else part, a different interpretation of what happened there? Or... Uh, I think you should bring on the various pre-suppers, because you have to understand, Jay's fan base are a bunch of brain-dead fucking cowards who <laughs> will not come on mic, right? None of them will actually have the balls. Are any of you cowardly little fucks going to hop on mic? Any of you want to actually talk to Troy, you fucking pathetic cowards? Yeah, they won't say shit. They're a bunch of idiots. Um, I, but I think you guys are pretty nice guy. I, <laughs> give, uh, I think you guys need to give Jay like a bit more slack. Like when he debates someone and he can't call you a retard, he really struggles. Like, come on. Another funny I mean, he thing. He did tell me a dummy at one point. Uh, yeah, that's he, very tame. Another so, funny so, thing was when he tried Steven, to. Steven, Steven Mog wants to be unmuted for a second. So if anyone yes, does actually right. want to to defend Jay side of the argument, um, okay, raving on the wall. You said he will. Okay, I'm gonna Steve, go ahead Steven Mog said he wanted to be unmuted as well okay and and keep in mind when these people come on right let's actually get oh did i get muted no let's actually get the argument look at the tree right we posted the tree we're looking for that argument with that conclusion that all other worldviews are contradictory if you want jay's argument to go through and not just to make your own new argument also one other funny thing then i'll step out uh, when he tried to meme on detroyer claiming what that he doesn't know what arguments or logic are Detroyer can like walk you through the intricacies of various formal systems like mo he'll never boast like this but like formal logic or first order logic with relational predicates and identity or like various other weird fucking logic he knows far more logic than Jay ever would right so astounded that you managed to not take the bait on that because that was absolutely hilarious but yeah let's hear the uh, let's hear if any of the cowards uh, hop on mic Hey, hey, yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. so, um, yeah, I like, I like that this was diagrammed. I think it's, I think this approach is sincere, and I, I do like it, so it's addressing premise two. Um, I, and I just wanted to kind of analyze the context for what, uh, how premise two can be addressed. So, and I, just to, to recap, would, do you think it's fair that Jay tried to, uh, I guess he tried to say uh, he was trying to set the requirement that he was asking for a worldview so that it could be critiqued so that he could expand premise two. Well, so are you saying something like this? So if I then presented a worldview, he could show the problems with it and then reason from there to show that what then that any other worldview, which is an orthodox Christianity, is 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 incoherent. Um, Yes, that's, that a, yeah, that's yeah. I think that's I think that's what he was trying to get at. Is he was trying to set the requirement, you know, to expand upon a, a worldview so that he could finish out the reply argument. But but hang on, he has all the tools himself to do that already. Like suppose, in fact, he already did that first step. He he started talking about atheistic materialism, and if that's a worldview or sort of like a class of worldviews, um, and if he can refute that, I mean, we didn't really discuss his alleged refutation of it, but. Uh, if he can refute that and then um, argue from there to a more general claim that all other non-Christian uh, worldviews are false or incoherent in the same way, then that's all he has to do. Why would I have to, or why would it even help for me to present um, another worldview or my own worldview? 
Yeah, and, and that's a good question. So uh, but this, and I'm just kind of fresh to all of this type of argumentation, but from what I gather so far is that there is a list of categories or transcendental presuppositions, and they are all are in some ways connected or have some kind of coherence web relationship to each other. And in order to evaluate one, um, I, and the thing is, is I think that you could do it for atheistic materialism, um, but one of the key points of, it's, it's strange, but he was looking for you to make a commitment to a worldview uh, for deconstruction or reply to, so, because one of the transcendental categories is uh, use of language, obviously, causality, laws of logic, self, etc. But one of them is also um, the uh, presuppositions that would come with using discourse to advocate a, a worldview. I know that's kind of weird, but when you begin to advocate for a worldview, it becomes loaded with presuppositions uh, that w uh, which have their own unique transcendental category, which are external from the worldview. Does that make sense? Um, I understood most of that, I think. The, on the first part, um, how he was saying that these some of these categories are interrelated. Yeah, I was willing to grant that. I mean, if you're, for example, talking about like identity over time, it's going to be interrelated with notions of identity and, and time, space time, logic, and so forth. And that's going to bring in some of those other categories as you talked about them. Um, but I'm not quite following how um, giving a sort of reductio argument against worldviews different from his own, or which differ from his own on the core elements, right, on the orthodox Christianity, um, lead to contradiction. I mean, Maybe I missed it or, or, or didn't quite follow, but what is it about me presenting a particular view, whether it's mine or not, that would help him to demonstrate or to make that argument, that more general reductive argument? Yeah, uh, so because when you begin, because presuppositional commitments, and this is what I'm still trying to unpack myself, but what I think I gather is that when you commit to a worldview and then you engage it in discourse, it comes loaded with presuppositions necessary for uh, the transcendental argument uh, from Jay's perspective. So I think that, and uh, and I and let me let me see if I can uh, extract that out and tease that out. What that would be, um, like, and we can start with like, for example, a transcendental argument for use of language and how that might apply, and sort of like. It, it, and how this could transfer over to when you when you commit to a worldview and you put that forward, then what presuppositions there are are could be identified because uh, Jay's argument hinges on or it's not Jay's argument, but, you know, the transcendental argument hinges on uh, the existence of some other worldview. Um, sure. I mean, there's many other worldviews and, make the and then and then many more possible worldviews. But um, just to be clear, I was willing to grant for the discussion that all of these uh, categories that he wanted to talk about, you know, causation, induction, logic, whatever, are uh, real things. They refer to either truths or things in the world, um, just for the sake of discussion, or at least to uh, for that point in the discussion, at least. And um, the question is, how do you get from those things, which will just grant our, our, our part of uh, any coherent worldview, or perhaps, um, to, well, if those are part of your worldview, then so must uh, the Orthodox Christian God on pain of, you know, contradiction or something like that. Yes, and I, I to I'm totally sympathetic with the question you're asking. Uh, and from what I gather so far is that all of these transcendental presuppositions, all the categories do have a co coherent, uh, they can be connected coherently uh, in in the context of the orthodox theology and philosophy i could grant that okay yeah and, and that's a possibility it's just that that would take an enormous amount of time and so jay's preference i think is that or at least also well, hang on. Sorry, to, sorry to interrupt sorry to interrupt but I, I i could just grant and i think i did for the sake of discussion that um all of his responses are coherent right within the context of orthodox christianity I could fully grant that his worldview is coherent, internally consistent, but that's not his claim, right? His claim is not just that his worldview is consistent and it makes uh, coherent sense of these things, but then it's the only one that does so. 
And that's the argument that I'm trying to tease yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and and the on, the fastest, most efficient way to suss that out is for a competing worldview uh, to come in and effectively try to address that premise number two, which is that all other worldviews are contradictory. So but that's just a burden shift, right? I mean, uh, his claim is that all other worldviews are contradictory. I mean, it's not going to be enough. Uh, so if, if we're going to say that my prevent, presenting a worldview which fails to be coherent and not be orthodox Christianity, um, if that's all that's required to demonstrate that premise too, that all the worldviews are contradictory, I mean, that's just clearly not the case, right? It's that all of the worldviews are not are contradictory, not just some or the one that I happen to present, right? And 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 if we take his claim for granted, unless I can provide some counterexample, that's just a burden shift, right? It's his claim; he should demonstrate it. Yeah. So, I mean. I yeah, that's where I'm still trying to suss out myself. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's fair. It's, I think it's a fair to ask for demonstration. It's just that it does, it, it's tough to think about, but when you engage in discourse, I, it's hard for me to articulate, at least right now, why commitment to a, a worldview is necessary uh, to, to suss that out. I, as far as like, because of the presuppositions required when you're evaluating worldviews, especially side by side, as to why it's necessary for a worldview to be brought to the table, what's required for that meta-analysis. Yeah, and I just don't, I mean, even if a, another worldview is required to, to compare and then make some more general argument, I mean, he can just state any other worldview he wants and then proceed from there. Why, why does it have to be the one that I present? I mean, we could have a, an argument. It would be a different kind of debate about whose worldview um, is more coherent, right? Because then, because then we'd be, then we'd actually want to like um, assess the coherence of his worldview, assess the coherence of mine, and then compare them. But that's you, not the argument we were having, right? Yeah, sure. So, do you yield the fact that there are, in fact, based on meta uh, meta transcendental presuppositional categories, that there are a limited number of possible worldviews? Well, no. So <laughs> it depends on. So if you're Talking about classes how, of worldviews. Yeah, so, so like, but uh, remember, there was a caveat. There is like a he yeah. said there is a limited number of worldviews with a starting point or something. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's like saying that there's a limited number of like classes of worldviews because there's a limited number of such starting points, and then yeah, all other worldviews about. can be grouped into yes um, into the the response to the starting points. I felt yeah. that was kind of silly because how how can you make fun of how can you make sense of any worldview that doesn't have a starting point? It seems like the definition of a wor worldview is that it provides you a starting point. So if you say that all worldviews have to answer, I mean, we didn't really get to this, but all worldviews, insofar as they're a worldview, have responses to um, those basic questions that he listed. And he said yeah. there's about eight, it's just whatever. Like the, <laughs> we need to address those those presuppositional categories. And I understand you're like that doesn't address the initial claim, but it was in it, it is in the process of of the the claim is basically and it, this takes a lot of time a lot of, it takes a lot of time to to flesh out this demonstration. But what I gather so far but, is that when you have all of these categories, laws of logic, these are the these are the transcendental presuppositional presuppositional categories I've identified so far: laws of logic, causality, self. Use of language, private property ethic, potentially, and external world, absolute universals, truth, etc. But anyway, though, and there are more. I don't know. Self, abstract, uh, uh, identity over time, space time, stuff like induction. Yeah. yeah. So you, so so let me get this right. Do you yield that they or concede that uh, out of those starting points, you can only construct so many worldviews? Well, no. So let me let me be clear of what I would concede, and what I did agree to in the discussion, is that, um, well, suppose that there is a, whatever he considers to be a starting point, and I remember saying at one point, well, what you're counting as a starting point is kind of vague, it's not, and then he said, well, it's going to be some, the basic responses to these questions of ethics, ethics epistemology, and metaphysics, and I'm like, okay, whatever, let's suppose, as he said later on, that there's um, eight basic positions, right, um, or, or eight basic questions, or whatever he said, and, and and let's suppose there's eight basic questions that are like yes or no for simplicity. Maybe there's more or less. Well, there's better. eight. Um, and those I are the study points. I want to precision there. So there are eight basic 
potential world paradigms that we know of that assemble those tre transcendental categories so far? Oh, well, no, but I thought, I thought what he was saying is, I mean, that's this, it's going to be the same point either way, but I thought what he was saying was that like, okay, consider, um, you know, universals. Um, there's two basic responses we can have. We can be a realist or an irrealist about them. And same thing for ethics. We could be objectivist or not objectivist or, or atheist or whatever. And, um, and so, and, and there's eight sort of questions like this that you can go one way or the other. And maybe this is an oversimplification, but something like this um, is the case on his view. There's some limited number of questions and a limited number of responses to each of those questions that we could have. And my point is that, well, okay, let's suppose that there's um, eight different questions and only two on each of them. Um, and all worldviews, insofar as there are worldview, have a response to each of these questions. Then we get, um, what, uh, uh, two to the power of eight, uh, that's, that's 256 different types of worldviews, classes of worldviews, right? Every worldview fits into one of those 256 types. And and then, but of course, within yeah. each of those types, there might yeah, be an infinite true, or a large number of, of, of worldviews. Sorry to interrupt. I, I just, uh, not all of those will be without contradiction, obviously. Well, of course. And, and so here's, here's what you would have to do to demonstrate his argument. First, you'd have to say, well, this is the um, responses that the Orthodox Christian, the Christian world, Orthodox Christian worldview gives on each of those questions. So this is the one type that it falls under, and also that it's the only worldview that falls falls under that type. Okay, and second, he'd have to go, and maybe he can more quickly go through this. He might have to go through each individually. He'd have to show that the other two hundred and fifty-five categories. Um, whichever worldview it, it is that we're talking about within those <laughs> categories, at least are incoherence or contradiction. And and he could do that um, more efficiently, right? Because if he could say, well, let's look at the first question. Um, um, you know, Orthodox Christianity gets it right, but there's, um, and so we could just rule out 128 of the other classes of worldviews because they get, they all get it wrong. And then we're down to 127 other worldviews and he can proceed from there. And, well, and, and he has to do that and end up with only his one class and only the one worldview within that class to demonstrate his argument of the possibility of the hundred. Sure, but in meta analysis um, of worldview, I, um, to, to take that to say that Jay's burden was to demonstrate for all those categories and classes versus him wanting you to commit to a given worldview so that he can show you how this argument works uh, in practice and how orthodoxy will come out on top. He just wanted you to commit to one so you can see the full argument lay out for one class instead of asking the burden of him to prove all categories all, all that categories. wouldn't even but like that, that, would, be be fair. that would be fair you i need to claim you should back up his claim it's just that right simple. it's just it's, a very horribly inefficient inefficient way to yes, and the way he suss it out is to commit to a worldview so you can see how the transcendental argument susses itself out so you can arrive at a conclusion but be able to yeah, but they, itself out without I think any that's fair. No. I don't think it is, right? It's, so, but you're you're asking a burden for him to demonstrate. If you're asking him he, to give. He's a, not he asking burden for a burden. He took that burden on the, himself. The burden is self-inflicted, is what they're they're saying, right? He said it's in the recording. He said at the beginning, due to the impossibility of the contrary, and at several times throughout the debate, he said that all other non-orthodox Christian worldviews are incoherent. That was his claim. Uh, I mean, I, and, I would actually like and, to. Ask I agree, right? That. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I'll just say I'll just say briefly. In in a sense, you're right, right? Because I could present my worldview. And I I wanted to. I thought we might get to this point. I was perfectly fine with doing this, of discussing some of my views on these issues. Um, and then he would say, okay, well, we can see my responses to each of these basic questions. This, um, that specifies this class of worldviews. And look, there's some contradiction here. And so we can rule out that class of worldviews. One down, two hundred fifty. Four to go, right? Um, I, I mean, that's fine on its own. It's just not a horribly efficient way of getting to the conclusion that he wants to get, right? Because he has to say that there's only one possible uh, coherent rule. Um, can, 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 can I ask, can I ask hold, this hold, hold on. question? And I also, of course, uh, I don't think that he would. Just real quick, uh, uh, Troyer, there's, there's a, um, a, another Orthodox um, presuppositionalist who wants to talk with you quickly. He want, he, but he can't stay sure. for too long, so he wants to talk. So I'll unmute. Uh, Perichoresis, I'll unmute you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You're unmuted. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, um, just chill. Hey, how are you? Yes, yeah. Um, Hello, so person. My, my question for you is that uh, when you come to the discussion and you ask Jay, you know, 
he has you say he has the second premise and it's like um all other worldviews be- besides orthodox christianity are incoherent and right. then you say that there's some additional logical work that jay needs to do to to prove this statement um my 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 point of view would be that in order for you to recognize that and make that claim with any epistemological weight uh, you would have to already be functioning within a within a system of metaphysics epistemology and axiology yeah that's and fine that, right i mean i can right. grant that and i have so, a world view. I, so right and so i think what the issue is here right is that you can't even begin to come to a debate or a discussion without a system of metaphysics and epistemology in place otherwise your assertions can't be accounted for I mean, you guys are having to de- so, you guys are having to debate debate i mean this is pathetic yeah, hang on. you're all I, you're all cl- you all claim victory hey, after hey, not can I have knowing a conversation that- with wait no here. no no that's jay that's jay he's that's back jay. if yes, he's coming yes, back yes, let yes, him jay. talk okay go ahead jay yeah, no i mean yeah i, I, I think it's, jay, I think just it's don't great. cry in the middle i think just it's great don't, do that. That. I, don't mock him just let him talk he's been just let him speak yeah, I think it's great that you guys want to defend the guy who says ad hoc is not a fallacy. I think that speaks worlds for all of you guys. He said logical fallacy. Said There's a, a difference fallacy. between... Yo, can the mod, can a mod put a mute? Can a mod does. put a mute on everyone but Jay and Troy since Jay's back? That would be really awesome because people are going to just pipe up and ruin the combo. Can we, mute, can we mute your soy voice first? Oh yeah, I'll wreck you anytime though, just for the record. But yeah, please. please. You can't wreck anything. Alright, 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 quiet. Can I ask my question before we mute? Is that no. possible? No, it doesn't. It doesn't matter whether it's an informal or a formal fallacy if you're trying to make an argument, dummy. Well, first of all, it wasn't because my it argument that contained the ad hoc argument. reasoning, right? It doesn't. I wasn't arguing ad hoc. Argument. Hang on a second. I'm not, talk, I'm not talking to you, soy boy. I'm talking to him. Okay. You're the king of soy. The whole internet knows it. <laughs> is he talking all to right, me? Sure, buddy. Is he, ta- is he speaking? To I think me? he's talking to me, but I, I don't. I'm talking. I don't you know, know who I'm talking. I'm talking to you. Ask yourself. You know that. Well, what if you, if you, if you're look? I was going to back the, out respectfully you know and let you talk to Troy. If you want to debate me, I'll crush no, you too. Okay. What's the argument for P two? You, you don't crush. You Jay, crush what's the argument for P two? Premises and conclusion, where the conclusion is that all worldviews but the Christian worldview contain a logical contradiction. Yeah, Yo. but see, you you don't understand. Sorry, is that a premise, Jay? Sorry, is that a premise? You don't understand paradigm. Jay, what's the first premise? premise? This is what you have stop, to do, stop, Jay. Jay, what's the first premise? Name. Stop using my name with your Jay, what's the first premise? Stop repeating my name. Jay, you yeah, made the claim right that. here. I'm gonna so I'm gonna like, post I'm gonna so post like, a little so little like, thing for you here. Can I make okay. a comment the on the fallacy then? That's the only way you like get an actual do. good priest. He's terrible. Can I make a comment on the fallacy thing, the ad hoc fallacy thing? Um, you can say retard that, Jay. My only claim, my only claim, was that um, ad hoc reasoning is not um, itself a, a formal, a logical fallacy, which is a flaw it in the structure of an argument. It is a logical fallacy. No, there's How? two different because, types because, of fallacies because... he's identifying. One of them is that there's logical ones, and then there's the informal ones. Ad hoc, totally it informal. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because You're, it doesn't this is, work. But the to thing is, is that this is this is not Nobody, a huge point. That's not the debate. This is not a because, huge point. Just argue about what the initial debate was it, about. But he said it wasn't a logical fallacy, and it is. It doesn't matter whether so that's it's the thing. Or there's a difference between yeah, there's a difference between a logical fallacy. Listen, listen, it. because it doesn't justify the claim he's making. That's the point. We're here to argue. And arguments presuppose logic and debate and yes. justification. But so if you the, can't justify the claims, then you can't be ad hoc. If I come to a debate, hang on, I did justify hoc, my claim. Hang on, no, my reasoning was not ad claim. hoc. I was you talking about another you person. Justify an ad hoc claim, dummy. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I wasn't <laughs> making an ad hoc claim. I was Please talking about a worldview in which someone might make an ad hoc claim. It's very. It's, if you don't see the difference, it's it's okay. Listen. I was presenting an example of a worldview that someone could have as a contra- uh, counterexample to your claim. Whether the person who has that worldview must engage in ad hoc reason to come to it is inconsequential, right? Uh, I'm talking about my counterexample so, to your so claim. You're not it's just a counterexample. Debate. That's so you're not here to debate. But I, I, presenting you a counterexample is, 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 is not an argument. Jay, 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 please. Jay, Let please. Have, hold let's on. just do this debate all over again. Whoever's talking wants to yeah, I'm way. trying to mute. Yeah, yo, Thank Jay, you. please, please, you've got to let this guy finish. Like, I get that, like, you want to run no, away. I made my prior. Yeah, that's, that's 
Like, Jay, please, like, please, like, stop getting hung up on the meta. Like, please argue the point and, like, stop crying about this. It's really cringe. It's not an argument, dummy. It is. You're just crying about meta. Like, be a man and engage with this point. I didn't point. say anything about meta. It's not an argument. Uh -huh. You are. You're just crying right now. Just so engage I'm with it. Stop being a guys, hold on, guys. Throw some balls, Jay. You guys Let's are so like you, use you guys are just gonna scare him away and not get to watch Troy wreck him. Uh, dude, can I'm we please just get a mute? Can we I'm please just get a mute on everyone on other than Jay? I'm gonna try to get Doobie to put a mute on people. I've been laughing at you all. It's hilarious. I need. Well, you don't you guys, everyone, take a take a chill pill for a second, guys, 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 guys. Please, please. We're gonna get back to the topic. I think someone brought up. Like there, there was some contention over ad hoc. Um, from what I understand, it does have some legitimate uses. Um, they're not; it's not always an Ill illegitimate uh, exercise, especially if the phenomena is uh, in early discovery or it cannot be properly studied or experimented on. And it's not even if it's, it's even not if it's a use. It doesn't it's not matter always a logical because, task. because it yeah, that doesn't matter. Logical. That doesn't matter because he can't justify that as an argument. I know that there are instances where you wait, can but I can a statement. But, wait. but if you're going to argue against God, then we're doing apologetics and debate, and that requires mm -hmm. logical justification. Right, my justification was nothing ad hoc, nothing ad hoc can be a point. logical justification. Well, no, my reasoning was not ad hoc. I was what you do. You just said no, I can give an ad hoc argument. Just let him. Just let no, him. No, I can say I can give an ad hoc argument. I said I have a counterexample to your claim. Here it is. Um, now, of course, I could grant that if a person were to um, come to the worldview that I was hypothesizing about only in an ad hoc way, um, so what? I mean, that's I'm not reasoning in an ad hoc way. That's then just you're not being person. coherent. Then, then it's incoherent. How so? I'm not reasoning ad hoc. And first of all, because and second of all, how would if, uh, even if I was, would it be... I mean, it's just a counterexample. I mean, what, By what definition, mean? something ad hoc is, is you're not justifying that argument. No, no, no. If you're, if, if you're just going to say, what if I come up with something ad hoc? I'm I, it's not me that's coming, coming up with something ad hoc. I'm just that. coming you're up with a sample worldview. That's, that's sophistry. I know you're not making the argument. It's a hypothetical. I know that. Okay. I understand. Right, but the, the, saying that. the thing which would be ad hoc would be the reasoning the person who has that worldview uses to come to their worldview or certain parts of it. Not my presentation of that possible worldview as a counterexample to your claim. This is sophistry. My reason is entirely sensible. It's, it's a counterexample to your claim. There's nothing it's nothing I'm not talking a about that. If it's, it's not a counterexample if it's not a logical argument. But of course it is, right? You claim it's this. Not. Here's it's a counterexample. not a logical argument. Your counterexample is not a logical argument that you can justify. Of course it is. It's a no, possible it's worldview. At being ad hoc is not a justification. No, my... My counterexample was not presented in an ad hoc way or reasoned in an Dude, ad hoc oh way at all. You're you misunderstanding what yourself. about this? You, you what about are talking the... in circles and contradicting yourself. No, you're confused about what the thing is which would be ad hoc. It's not my reasoning or my counterexample. It's the reasoning I'm, I'm the person. I'm not arguing who... against your position. You've never presented right. a position. This is a hypothetical. So stop going right. in a circle about it being hypothetical. No, but, I know that. No, but you're talking about my reasoning as if I'm arguing in an ad hoc way when I'm doing no such thing. You I never are, said that I was. You said, what if I present an ad hoc that escapes the dilemma of contradiction? No, no I never yes, said that. No, I yes, said... No, Dude, I you presented an ad hoc an example you brought it into this and said it. You said, I can present something ad hoc. No, I did not say that. I did not you say that. Rewatch the tape. Let me, let me state I, what I said. I, it's go, it's no. going up on the website. Yeah, go ahead. Let, give me 30 seconds to explain what I said. You claimed... All worldviews are uh, non-Christian worldviews are X. I gave an example of a non-Christian worldview which is non X. I pointed out, no, and admittedly didn't. so, that the person who uh, would you hold said, that said, worldview might only reason to it in an ad hoc way. But so what? It's still an example of a worldview which is non-Christian yet doesn't satisfy X. And where X was that's at least the incoherence on the paradigm level. Whatever. That's the whole point. My reasoning was not ad hoc. Now it's an example of a um, of a worldview that someone might hold. Only this, is the most in an way. this is the most sophisticated. This is a simple logical point, right? No, it's not. No, it's not. You're not giving a counter argument. What is? I'm giving a counter example. It's pretty straightforward. You said if all non Christian counter, worldviews okay. lead to so contradiction. A, Here's an non Christian worldview that doesn't lead to contradiction. And so your claim is false. Argument, if it's a counter argument, yes. then it has to be logically justified. And you can't logically justify your ad hoc basis. Well, it's a logically valid argument. What do you mean? No, it's not. Destroyer, uh, an ad hoc 
the reason that ad hoc oh reason... my god get these people out of here just let troy hey, and jay talk I was, well i mean i was kind of talking just let them talk no no guys yeah sorry sorry to uh we're just gonna let these two talk again and whoever's mic is like that please yeah i mean i could try to provide some formal representation of the argument i'm making but i kind of already stated hold on, hold on, hold on. You're, so you're making an argument you just screwed up yes, because you admitted you're making an argument arguments, said, have to be log arguments have to be logically grounded and justified you tried to say that this was ad hoc that's not no i didn't i didn't say my argument was ad hoc i said the person who held the world view that i'm talking Dude, about I in my argument that. My I, I, we know was, that that's a sophistry to get around my claim that's a sophistry why don't you present your view you don't have a Hang on, this is this is what you I said from the very beginning. You don't have an argument. You don't have a worldview. All you have is sophistry. Uh, an argument that con with the conclusion of which is a counterexample to your counter claim is an argument, argument, right? The hypothetical and, counter uh, Listen, the hypothetical counter argument is based on ad hoc. So it's no, no, no. the argument the counter argument is not ad hoc. I mean it's just, It I is. You said it was. To use it. No. I said that the person who held the hypothetical worldview oh may only be able to reason in an ad hoc way to believe that worldview. But that's in not the first hour, anything to do with my you're argument. You're lying to yourself. In the first hour, you said, what if I come up with something? I never said, what if I come up with something Yes, you did. Yes, you I, did. You, because you said, well, that's why you put said something on the line. I never said that. <laughs> that's why you said ad hoc is not a fallacy 20 times. I said ad hoc is not a logical fallacy because it isn't. And, but I also never said that I was making an ad hoc argument or reasoning an ad hoc argument. It is a logical fallacy. Yeah, the, you're, you're putting hypotheticals up so that you can keep shifting back and forth and saying that that's not my argument, it's hypothetical. Why don't you put, we'll put forth an argument for your position? Because right. you don't have a position. Well, my position so in this your position debate is was one of criticism about your uh, transcendental argument, right? That's my fine, position is that your argument does not succeed argument. as, as presented. You haven't given a coherent argument for, uh, against my position. I just did one, right? I, I, I just provided one. This no, was a counter when I, respond to it, when I respond to it, you just simply say, well, that's not my argument. It's a, it's a hypothetical. Well, when you, when you respond saying that oh, well, I admit that I'm making an ad hoc argument, uh, of course I'm going to say that's not what I'm doing because I said uh, that's not what I'm doing and I never said it was. And talking in circles. You can't I mean, if, if at this point we can't, can't get past your, your claim that I, that I admitted to making an ad hoc argument, and yeah, you did, no you said it in the first hour. You said it in the first hour. I that's did why not. You tried to, that's I did why not. you tried to say. That's why you tried to say ad hoc's not a fallacy. It is a fallacy. That's you not. Have, Jesus you, Christ! We're just going to repeat this over and over. a public debate. Do you think you could go to a public debate and make an ad hoc argument and not get laughed off the stage? I never said, nor did make an ad hoc argument. Right? And you just I never said that I was making an ad hoc argument. Why, I would not. Why then why were you saying it's not a fallacy? Because it's not a logical fallacy. I mean, it's just a different sort of thing. So you can go to an art, you can go to a debate and make an ad hoc argument and not get laughed off the stage. Um, you might get laughed off the stage, but it's not a, a logical fallacy. This is literally the dumbest argument I've ever had. It is a logical fallacy because you can't. Why does it make an argument invalid by including ad hoc reasoning? Because I because you can't argue if anyone can pull up something ad hoc. It's no longer what? a debate. Obviously, whether it makes it no longer a debate or not is, is inconsequential. It's if it's a formal of logical it fallacy, does. then it destroys then it's the possibility of an argument logic. makes the argument then invalid. It destroys the possibility of logic in debate. If everybody can be ad hoc, duh. I mean, straightforwardly, uh, you could have a, a, a are, question are making really argument that's that's ad really hoc, but, like but you, still valid. Do you think anybody can just say something ad hoc and that, that that's valid? It's it could be logically valid. But, but it's not may not be sort of dialectically sensible. Arguments and debates sure, about I'm not... justified claims. Right. No, I you agree that sophist. with that. Right. So I've never disagreed with that. You just admitted that you're here to do sophistry. No. So two things. Again, first of all, I never said that. Um, you're talking in circles because you're uh, a liar. Hang on. And a give me, oh my God. Give me, you actually want to give me thirty. I, I need thirty seconds to at least. Uh, uh, just let him check your DMs. Okay. So, again, again, my claim was only that, uh, in this in this respect, that uh, ad hoc reasoning is not necessarily invalid or, or a formal logical fallacy. Because it doesn't and, work in a debate. Yeah. You can't do. I could grant that it might not work in debate for various dialectical then you, then you reasons. Just lost. Whatever. Again, you just granted the very thing that you've been. You, this is the dumbest hang debate. On, literally, hang on. I've ever let heard. me finish the point. No, let me finish the point. The second point was. You're literally the dumbest person.
The okay. second point was I never said, and in fact denied no, no, that I was making an ad hoc argument. argument. You're not even really. So even if even, I can tell you even if we agree that ad hoc arguments don't work in the context of debates, um, I am not doing something and didn't say that I was doing something. This is that I so I mean, it's just you're pure circle, circle talking. Like you're in your own mind, lost in a circle. Nothing that you're saying is coherent. Okay. I mean. I, I mean, I don't think that's the, the there's there's no consensus of the room. I've never heard anyone but. say in a debate, literally. I mean, are you trolling? I think you're trolling. Um, I will give you credit as the best why debate trolling? troll of all time because you're the worst debater I've ever heard. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, uh, sure. If that's what you think. Okay, he fled. I don't think I don't think Jay's ever heard any of his own debates then. Wow. Oof. By the way, towards the end there, I just decided to let you guys duke it out over the ad hoc thing. Did you, uh... Yeah, he kept saying, he kept saying that um, I said that I was making an ad hoc argument. But, but that's just absurd. I never said that, and I never did that. Why would I mean, we watched the video. I'd never the, thought that. The, only the argument I was making was... The, the argument I was making was, um, this was his claim. You could start with the... You could formalize whatever you want. He's, he's saying that for all X, you know, quantifying over worldviews, um, if X is not Christian theism, then X uh, entails a contradiction. You could write that in, in first order logic. Um, and the second premise would be something like this. I'd give an example of a worldview, as he admitted there is one, right, um, which doesn't entail a contradiction, um, and it also isn't uh, Orthodox Christianity. And so uh, that's proves by reductio that his first premise is false. Uh, his first his initial claim, which is just the first premise, is, is, is false. Um, that's the argument I'm making, right? I mean, I guess I've made other points in the course of the discussion, but that's the argument I was making at this end, at the end here, um, and, and earlier as well. Um, and he was saying that, well, but hang on, this you admitted that the, the worldview is, is ad hoc, and you, so you're preventing an ad hoc argument. What? No, this is a perfectly valid argument. That I could write down with true premises that I could demonstrate them all. There's nothing ad hoc about it. It's entirely think, justified. I don't think he actually even knows what valid means. That's what um, I was saying. You should have. No, probably not, but I mean, whatever. I mean, you should have <laughs> I'm not just short coming out. Yeah, no, I mean, he, he obviously was completely lost. Um, I, and I then was... he has to walk around and, and complain about what I'm, I'm saying stupid things or whatever sort of ad homs he has to do to avoid dealing with the subject matter. Hey, I mean, apparently he you're have, stupider than me. Interview. So, I mean, I think he you, does... you took, you took the, the fucking throne there, I guess. Um, does this but all the you, time. you could, you could, you could probably see how, how I dealt with him insofar as he's talking to me. You have no idea, dude. Like, him sitting there saying that to me and me going, okay, what the right thing is to let fucking Troy and him duke it out. So I'm going to somehow not talk. You have no idea how hard it is. But then <laughs> when, when, when he keeps going on about me and randoms are piping in, it's like, oh, just shut the fuck up. Let Jay and Troy talk. But yeah, you saw how at the part where he was actually engaging me, obviously, if he calls me up by name, I'm going to respond to him. Um, yeah, what was I, it when I, he was talking about you? You weren't even talking, and he said like he started talking about soy and and like. Oh yeah, I live in like, his mocking skull, you or something. Dude. What? Yeah, what is yeah. that? No, I I got under his skin long ago as like. How does I mean, someone I, engage in you know these supposedly like respectful debates over ideas, and then just resort to just like name calling and and mocking like that? It's just, it's. It looks so bad on him. I don't... <laughs> it, it, yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's absolutely hilarious. Um, but you saw how I dealt with him, right? Like, when I talk to Jay, it's very simple. Like, he, all Jay will do when you get him in a corner is every fucking thing possible to derail into any other topic than the thing he can't answer. Nominalism, justification, you know, epistemology, metaphysics, what anything to get away from the thing you have him cornered on. So when you have him in a corner, like... He's claimed that all other worldviews are impossible, and he's got to obviously show that. There's only one sentence to be said to Jay. Deliver the argument with a conclusion that all other worldviews are contradictory. What's the first premise? Anything else he says to you doesn't even deserve a reply. It's just, what is the first premise? That's all I would say to him. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's one approach, and it sounds like, I mean, if he were having this debate, this is, this is probably where it would have gotten to a loop and then him leaving. He would have just said, well, what's the argument for the 
premise that all the world views are contradictory. And then he'd start saying something else and be like, oh, no, but what's the problem? You just right. keep doing that again and again until either he actually started to give an answer or he left. Because that's, I mean, that, and that's one way to approach the debate. I, I, I think that's fine. Um, it's not exactly how I tend to do it, but I mean, it's a valid approach. I, I don't, I'm not saying anything about that. Um, no, I, I'm not. I'm not saying anything bad about your approach. I just, uh, yeah, that's that's the only way I know to handle them. But yeah, I mean, Troy, maybe maybe the other pre suppers. I mean, they they feel so confident talking shit in, in chat, and and you know, props to the one guy who came on. He obviously didn't understand like the problem with <laughs> with uh, uh, Jay's argument and how Jay's placed a burden on himself to show that all other worldviews are contradictory. But props to that guy for actually coming on. I think do any of was, the other pre He seems somewhat somewhat modest and, and reasonable. Even yeah, if, I, yeah, I I I, I, I do good. not my my talking shit about pre is not direct to that guy. I think that guy's just confused. He didn't seem like an yeah. asshole or anything. But the people going off in chat, right, who are so convinced that Detroiter's an idiot. Why don't you go on mic? Why don't you uncuck? There's a little button. It's in the bottom left corner. You touch it with your mouse. I know it's hard, but it's a downward motion on the sort of clicky area of the mouse. And if you push it, then people can hear you. And then you uh, can actually, make your Actually, your, your wish might be I don't granted. Know. There yeah, is an Orthodox uh, Christian okay, who wants sorry. to you talk. Know. And I'm going to unmute him right now. I'm going to watch him. A new challenger approaches. Holy fuck. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, um, uh, Jay Dyer one is have, is going to debate me in his server. Apparently, he's like, going to debate you in his server. I don't know. He 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 invited me to a server because I sent him a message. I said, well, I was asking him to be quiet so you could talk. <laughs> and then I I said ad hoc involves the reasons for one's holding a belief, but the reasons for holding a belief are never going to make an argument involving that belief invalid by form. Right. And then he just said, "You're dumb." Tof, if you go in and debate him, you definitely have to record that because you'll destroy him. I'm sure, and it'll be really funny. Well, it looks like you challenged the chat. Did someone step up, Jonathan? Yeah, wait. I thought. Uh, yeah, Moon. Mog is not yeah, actually Moog. a Christian. He's just yeah, fucking around. Yeah, no, we know. Um, Moon, Moon Watcher, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear yeah. you. Okay. Um, I'm just curious what Detroiter's worldview is. I think everybody in the chat would like to know. Yeah, I mean, that's a difficult question to answer succinctly because I can't give, um, <laughs> since uh, I don't you, have an Orthodox Christian God in my worldview, uh, I can't say, well, that's my worldview and that kind of stuff. But if you want to talk about some of these particular issues, I mean, over various metaphysical or what you call transcendental categories, whatever, if you want to talk about those, I can give some of my views on those. But just get an overarching account of my worldview, I'm not going to be able to give. I mean, re regarding theism, I, I consider myself more or less agnostic, perhaps leaning towards the atheist side, but not um, substantially. I mean, is there anything in particular you're wondering about my view? or Because I can't give this kind of straightforward um, two-sentence answer to my <laughs> description of my worldview. It's, it's well, not I'm, not, I'm not asking for a two-sentence answer. I'm just uh, just wanting to know what you believe. Um, I mean, I believe many things. Uh, is there any particular philosophical issue that you had in mind, or is this? Well, do you believe in metaphysical entities? Like, do you believe mathematics is a metaphysical entity that exists outside of human consciousness, or is it just simply a human construction? Um, well, so two things. First, I don't like the, um, term metaphysical entity you know um i don't think that's well given my my particular views on modality that's not a particularly meaningful thing to say but in terms of what i think mathematics are mind independent or numbers exist mind independently or something like that um as i said earlier i'm i'm somewhat open on this regard it's a controversial issue that doesn't have a in my view an easy resolution i kind of lean towards a nominalist view anomalous view but i don't it's hard to argue for it, and there's and there's, and there's problems for um, all the views, as far as I can tell. So it's it's not something I'm well committed one way or the other on. I, I hope maybe it's not a very satisfying answer, but I mean it's it's my honest response uh, in in a brief sense. So you would say your worldview would justify that as I don't know. I mean, if you want to put it in three words, sure. Um, I kind of as I said, uh, um, it's not all I can say about the matter. 
but ultimately, um, I'm not strongly committed one way or the other on, on the different possibilities. Um, I, I kind of lean towards the nominalist view, but ultimately, yeah, I would say um, I'm somewhat agnostic on the issue. Is that okay? So, what about the subject of morality? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm anti-realist about morality. You're a what? So, anti-realist. Well, okay, I, I would. So there's a lot of things to say about this. Um, um, so again, I said uh, I lead towards an anti-realist view. I don't think there are um, uh, like objective moral facts or duties or values. Um, okay, can I stop you right there? Sure. So do you see how that might be a contradiction? Uh, I mean, if I, if I did see that... If I didn't see that, then I probably wouldn't hold it. So, I mean, maybe you can let me know. Okay. Well, let me try to dissect that. Then. Sure. You, you simply stated, and interrupt me if I'm misrepresenting you here, that there are no objective moral values. Do you see how that is an objective value? No. Because you're, you're making a reality claim. You're, you're, you're saying this is true. Right. It is true that morality is not objective. Correct. So you're saying something is correct, and to say that morality, say I take the stance that morality is objective, that you're saying that I'm wrong. Um, sure. So that's an objective claim you just made. It's an objective I'm claim, wrong. but it's not an objective moral claim right. or an objective value claim. Well, it is because to say you to say something is, like to say something is objectively or not objectively that way. Mm -hmm you're saying that that's a basis in reality that that we should live by reality no i'm not saying that at all what? so i can just be absurd i can just blather right here and you can't tell me i'm wrong no if you're so making you claims about whatever. the world i can talk about whether they're true or false um but if you're making claims about objective morality um, i'm going to say that i think those are not true right but 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 what what in that is is self-contradictory that's an ethical claim though so this way, wait, wait, hang on. To say that something is not true is an, an ethical claim. Yes. Uh, okay, then we must. We're just going to be talking past each other because I don't I include um, truth as uh, under the domain of ethics. It's just a different thing altogether. And so, I mean, uh, by your conception of of ethics You're and saying, ethical claims, yeah. sure. If I was making, if I was operating under that concept, then this would be a contradiction. But I'm not operating under that concept. Truth claims are not um, ethical claims, on my view or on, on my concept usage, right? Um, and so there's just no contradiction. So if I behave falsely, you don't think that that's wrong? What does it mean to behave falsely? Well, to behave again, what you just said, there's true and false. There are true and false claims or propositions. So if I said something that was false- I don't know if there are true or false behaviors. I was lying to you. Okay, you so you, you added a false a proposition which you you know and if you lie then presumably you took it to be true but but stated it anyway or took it to be false but stated it anyway right? that would be something you take to be lying well no or maybe just, with some I'm just saying, like, 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 effect you wanted to have i'm time. saying something about reality like the world's made of cheese or something like that. sure you say the world's made of cheese you you, you don't actually believe it but you, you state it anyway maybe to mislead someone or something like that you, you to lie to somebody um but well, what, saying, what about your statement you has an relative. ethical component? Well, I'm like speaking on a meta meta ethical level. I mean, anytime you say something is true or false, okay. you are making a you are making an ethical claim. You are saying that the way this is the right way to be. This is the right. This is what adheres to reality. Um, no. So when I say that, um, say I say something that is true. I don't know. The the sky is blue, right? Um. I'm not saying anything about, well, we ought to believe that the sky is blue. I'm certainly not saying that the sky ought to be blue or it's good that the sky is blue or anything like that. I'm just making a claim about the way the world is and not about um, ethics or, or, or duties or, or what I value or, um, you know, any prescriptions or normativity or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah. But you're, you're not talking on the meta level. I think we're, we're well, what is, what is the addition of the meta level um, add to that, that discussion? Well, you made you're making a claim about the world right. that the sky is blue. Mm -hmm. If I tried to, if I contradicted that and I said something that was not true, yeah, you said the sky is not blue, for example. Yeah. 
we're both making claims and one is true and one is sure false. yeah as, as long it's as one of them is objective understanding of the world yeah so in, in so far as you know these claims are objective they're not merely mind dependent or something like that and, and and one of them is true one of them is true and the other is false okay yes but my claim wasn't that there are not objective claims about the world or that there are not true objective claims about the world whatever or that there are not objective claims about the world whatever um my claim was only that there are not true um objective moral claims for well, example that, that, that you ought not yeah, kill like, or that uh, whatever you know stuff like that duties values um um prescriptions whatever well, laws if you believe that morality is objective i'm not saying you do but that would be intrinsic that would affect reality that would be intrinsic to what we're talking about mm -hmm. you're trying to separate the two and i'm saying that that's not I'm, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by intrinsic i mean uh if i believed that there were objective moral claims um uh that may have implications for how i think about the world even beyond those claims themselves i mean i like got using to guide my behavior or or whatnot but um i don't see what difference it makes to um whether or not the sky is blue is an objectively true statement right i mean what what's the relevance <laughs> Well, okay, so you're saying that um, it's somehow incoherent to say, on, on one hand, that uh, it's objective fact that the sky is blue, but there are no true objective moral facts, right? Somehow that leads to some in incoherence or contradiction. And my question is, what does whether there are any objective moral facts have to do with whether the, it's an objective fact that the sky is blue? It just seems to be um, irrelevant to whether the sky is objectively blue uh, as to whether the um, there's some objective moral fact or another, um, do you kind of understand the point? Well, okay. I just, what is the relevance of it? I I, th I do understand what you're saying, but to make it more clear, explain. To, give me your definition of morality. Yeah. So, well, so morality has to do with um, values, uh, duties, and. Um, uh, and, and, and odds and um, God damn it, there's another word I'm trying to think of, but and and so forth and uh, vaguely, and then we give more precise definitions of, say, maybe starting from the sort of meta ethical side. Well, what exactly um, moral statements uh, are saying with respect to those things? Are they just expressing um, emotive states, or, or or are they expressing uh, propositions about? the uh, properties of things existing in the world they're expressing propositions about desires or desire maximization uh, uh, and then we can kind of answer those questions and then we can answer well which statements um, within that method meta framework are, are true or false or meaningful um, and, and so forth I mean that's kind of a general approach um, to the discipline that I have um, I, there are certain moral concepts that I use I don't want to um, I don't think it makes sense or is necessary to dismiss this language altogether, but but the concepts which um, rely on the existence of uh, well, which uh, sorry, if you used to make statements that, that are you know true only if there's some mind dependent moral facts, um, those I don't think are going to uh, turn out true. Um, sorry, that, that response was a little bit rambly and. Um, but maybe it was a, a little bit helpful. I mean, I'll be honest, not really. I'm trying to get answers out of you. Sure. And uh, it doesn't seem like you want to or you're not comfortable giving well, solid uh, sentences to your worldview. I mean, we have to challenge our worldviews. We have to see if sure. they're coherent. Yeah, I mean, if I'm you want to think... You put the effort in. Right. So, all right. I mean, so I don't if we're moving on from, way. I'm just being honest. Hang on. No, it's, it's all right. It's all right. If we're moving on from understanding how um, being anti-realist about moral claims entails, um, you know, being uh, not believing that there are any objective uh, truth claims, um, I don't, I don't, I don't think you've given some any good argument for thinking that, unless it's just some some by definition, in which case we. 
differ in our definitions, which is interesting. And if we want to move on from that to, um, well, what, what do I mean when I talk about morality? Um, yeah, I mean, I take morality to be primarily due, due um, uh, to do with desires and, and, and preferences and preference maximization and, and, and so forth. Um, and, and stuff that we do uh, collectively in order to maximize desires, maximize desires that people have uh, collectively. Um, I mean, that's just a brief ap approach of what I think moral discourse is mostly about and a plausible account of um, uh, of the discourse that doesn't commit us to things that are um, not likely true, like objective moral facts and stuff, and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, is that the kind of thing you're looking for or something more solid, I'm, I'm not quite clear. I mean, I went off on a tangent trying to understand you. Um, but I mean, I'm ultimately, I'm not here to debate you. I'm just here to try to understand what your worldview yeah, is. Yeah, that's fine. And you were asking me questions about, about ethics. And... Yeah, just so you could get more detail. Sure. Do you understand my concern, though, about the, the first point? I mean, you, you did make an argument, right? Or you did make a claim that being anti-realist about ethics uh, entails a contradiction. And I don't think it does. I don't, what, what, there's no good reason provided for thinking so. Right? Are we, am I debating you? I'm trying to get answers. Well, I mean, you provided an argument. I mean, OK. So I mean, presumably you asked for my something uh, some of my views on ethics, morality. I said uh, I, I'm anti-realist, um, and then you you made an argument that's supposed to be a sort of uh, refutation of my position, right? Because I, I think that there are objective truths, right? For example, that there are no objective moral facts is, is would be one of those, um, and that leads to a contradiction in my in my view. But I I don't think uh, that's been been demonstrated. Now, if you don't want to kind of go back and forth on that, and that wasn't meant to be sort of an argument, you just want to explore my view. I mean, that's fine. But that was an argument that you made, right? And I just, I don't think it was any good. Oh, I mean, that's fine. I'm, I'm honestly just trying to get answers from you. I, sure, I don't sure, have sure. the time to debate. I just know that the chat was uh, trying to understand what you, where you're coming from. Sure. All right. Or do I mean, yourself. You're echoing through your mic. I, I will note, as an aside, though, I don't mind discussing some of the my other views on philosophical issues. I mean, I, I thought the debate with, with Jay would get there, but we can get past where we did. Um, but it's it's in a way it's um, tangential to the subject of the debate, right? He was presenting his presuppositional argument, his transcendental argument, and my position was um, he, the approach is, doesn't work, and and all I, I'm of taking as a burden that is to, when he presents his argument, point out where it's lacking in either um, form or in demonstration of the premises. And um, that's what I set out to do, and I, I take it that I did. Um, now, we could also talk about um, my views on some of the issues he brings up. And again, we might have gotten to there, um, but we didn't. Um, if you want to discuss them now, that's fine. But it's just kind of orthogonal to the original debate topic in that way. You, get, you understand the point I'm making? It's like, yeah, okay, we can talk about these things, but, but it, I mean, it's, it's just irrelevant, really, to the original topic of discussion. So you deny that uh, morality and mathematics and other sort of metaphysical categories exist outside of human consciousness, is what I'm trying to get at? Well, I think that there are some, certainly many things that exist outside of human consciousness, right? I mean, there's a, there's a world out there, right? And, and perhaps there's you know, there's causal like relations that obtain independent of, of minds, there's um, whatever other things we want to talk about. I, I talked about math mathematics, I was um, somewhat agnostic with lean nominalist, whatever. Um, I, we talked about um, uh, uh, ethics, and that, in that case, a materialist, but I'm not going to deny the existence of all these things across the board. I think there's causation, I think there's um, an external world, whatever other categories he talked about, um, some of those. Um, I mean, if you want to go down the line and talk about some of my views on those things, we can. Oops, I didn't mean to take that. Troy, what are you doing right now? Um, I, I don't know. You're hearing it. 
<laughs> what do you want me to say? I don't. Are you asking why I'm either even still engaging with this conversation? You're doing way too like a uh, good good cop right now. You knew the guy was making what kind of mistake the guy was making. Why didn't you just explain it to him? Sorry, are you talking about Jay or the guy I was just talking about? The Moon Watcher guy. You saying well, there, I, that it's that it's an absolute fact that there are no moral facts is not. No, I think I already you. explained that, right? No, I, I, I already explained that. it at all. Well, so he made the argument. I mean, I guess he doesn't really want to pursue that because he's more interested in just what my views are. But still, he made an argument that was ostensibly against my view that um, uh, if if I'm actually realist about, about morality, about moral claims. Um, uh, in terms, uh, in, uh, sorry. Then, if I don't think there's some objective moral claim that there are no objective moral claims is an objective claim, right? Um, that that's somehow a contradiction. I can't, at the same time, believe that there are objective truths, but not believe that there are objective moral claims. And that that is yeah, just, I mean, absurd to me. I think that's a yeah, that's absurd. Do you under do you understand that's silly to say? <laughs> Well, I'm talking on an ethical. I'm talking about meta ethics. Well, right. So uh, whatever you're talking, there about. are no moral facts. Doesn't have to be a meta ethical claim. Right. Uh, well, unless you're just taking it by definition that all statements of fact are they have are, some ethical they are meta, they are meta ethical, But I, I mean, what does it mean to say that they are meta ethical? You're saying I'm not sure exactly what that means. Correct or right. Well, hang on, but this that's just a pun, right? Because because we're we're hang on, but that's just a pun, right? We're 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 clearly just equivocating what we mean by right. Right yeah. in um in the truth sense is going to be about whether it's true or false. Right in the ethical sense is about whether it's going to be um um you know good or wrong or or something like that, right? About whether it's something you ought to do or ought not do, um depending on which sort of uh, what's thing in ethics we're talking about. But whether something is true or false is not part of ethics, whether normative or ethical. Unless you're just taking it to be part of ethics by definition, in which case, as I said earlier, we're just talking past each other because we're using different concepts. I don't think you understood what you just said. So is Jay Dyer like yeah, the pre-sub version of T-Jump? Um, oh, wait, Hagar, are you complaining that I'm doing too much, using too much jargon or something? Is that, is that what you're complaining about? Just that, you get them on mic, dude. And, and uh, man, honestly, Sunseed, asking a question like that, I mean, I don't know is if he anyone even here? Can... Thought he was. Yeah, Chase Hagard. In one of the mods on mute him, he has the red mute. Who is that? Hey, some, some precept guy. There he's uh, there. That guy just is unmuted. Just look at what happens when you unmute to this guy. Yeah, his mic his mic is really bad. That's why I'm <laughs> oh god. <laughs> they keep on unmuting him too. Chase Hagard, oh, can you can you talk? Chase Hagar? I was talking about Hagar, just like Hagar. Okay, so Hagar. someone's got to mute that guy. That, that was a terrible idea. <laughs> they always, like, for some reason, right away, they'll unmute him. Well, then what right. about the other Hagar? Like, honestly, if the preceptors want to argue, just come on. No, no, Hagar's not uh, Hagar was just saying that, um, we're somewhat of a complaint, I guess, that some of the things I'm saying with, like, kind of the jargon is going to be, I go past a lot of people in the server, which, I mean, maybe. But if it's going past the people I'm talking with, uh, we can clarify some of the terms, or if it's just being <laughs> not interesting to I, people. I don't think it's that. Scene. I think that, like, when you you got to realize that, like, when you have to explain this stuff, you're explaining it to someone in a way that's just way too charitable for how hostile your audience is going to be, for how hostile your opponent's going to be. All right. Saying be meaner. 
Basically, yeah. <laughs> but we, Troy's kind of like the good cop, right? Like, his kindness allowed him to wreck Jay for a longer period of time. Like, he was right when he said, like, he's talking about my approach. Like, if I talked to Jay, he'd have fucking fled within like two minutes, and it wouldn't have been funny. Well, I mean, yeah, audible. me criticizing his approach doesn't mean that your approach is correct either. I Hang mean, on. there's Who's... problems with your approach as well. Is it, uh, is, I've seen the person Helios in the comment complaining uh, again and again about what? Now he's saying that I'm being too vague. I he's unmuted. Does, does he mind explaining what, what, how I'm being too vague? See, this is just what you get from Jay Dyer fan, right? They oh, talk, said, no. they talk a bunch of shit, but they'll just hide. Well, right? just type it in chat. Why? Why? How am I being too big? And I'll, oh, yeah. I'll address it. <laughs> you are so charitable to engage with chat. I don't text, know. I, text chat. Though. Which people don't are you like I am like? with first in chat. Some some people don't like I am like I don't I don't mind if you want to type your the complaint in the chat. I'll, I'll read it and respond. We're we're just teasing Troy. I don't. I know. <laughs> I know. Okay, I'm Are there ask you. yourself mods here? Mm, no. <laughs> yeah, you are unmuted, Hagar. Is Jack still here? Yeah, here's the train in the in the chat just uh, just pointed up. Well, why don't you bring up the Azot distinction? Um, yeah, I think that is a little bit more tricky, but uh. It, it, if we take the distinction to be valid, we could just say, yeah, of course. Um, the claims of fact are going to be about what is the case, and claims of morality are going to be about, roughly speaking, what ought to be the case, or how you ought to act, or what, what is good, or something like that. Um, and those are just going to be different sorts of, of claims. But yeah, so I think that's what, what Heresy Train is going to do. This would be another way of responding to um, what Moon, what was it, Moon Watcher was saying? Yes. I'm here. But more simply, that would be the response that um, the response I gave, which is just that um, it's it doesn't entail uh, it's not entailed by um, um, objective claims that uh, a fact that you're talking or implying some the truth of some objective moral claim. So I just I mean that's just we can just stop there. I mean unless you can demonstrate well, and, that and, the first and, entails the second, unless they are using some kind of different meaning those terms right exactly and i grant that it. if if he's using a concept of um uh, under which like any objective moral fact is just going to be um an objective well i don't want to say it like that sorry any objective sta st any statement of objective fact is is just also a statement of um moral fact or something like that or, or even where at least one is um right um Okay, even if at least at least one that. statement of objective fact also like does, is does someone does someone have the link to the J Dyer server? Because I just want to listen to this for a couple of minutes. I might come back here, but um, I'll send you one in uh, in DM. But yeah, Troy, that was great listening to you. Um, just completely pwn J Dyer. I think that's uh, like I I don't say this just to be flattering. I think that's the worst anyone's like ever wrecked him. So it was like very satisfying for me personally. Okay, thanks. Hey. Uh, yeah, that was that was worse than I was expecting actually. And <laughs> the, how quickly you went to, um, you know, <laughs> flopping around and 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 at home and, and insults was just just hilarious. I I mean, okay, um, were you sending it? Uh... Are Josh and Bryn still in the VC? Or did they leave? I'll do an they were here, I don't know. Sorry, no, he didn't call me an incel. Although he did call um. Called you a soy uh, boy or something. Ask yourself a soy boy. No, that was talk he's, he clarified that he was talking about ask yourself there. But either way, whatever. He did call me what one of the stupidest people he's ever debated or something like that. He called me a dummy. You don't understand how arguments work. You don't understand. Oh yeah, yeah. Transcendental. Yeah, yeah. Like that. When I said that ad hoc reasoning is not a, a log, a formal, a logical fallacy that I just like don't understand the basics of of, of logic. I mean, okay, come on. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cringy. All he ever All right. did was attack. 
Yeah, I mean, Jay's just never going to, uh, he's never, and he, you know, another thing, I forgot to talk about this one. Jay obviously doesn't understand what an internal critique is, right? Because he seems to constantly not detect when he's being attacked via internal critique. And further, not to understand that when he's being attacked uh, via internal critique, that it's not a legitimate move to say, well, hey, guy delivering internal critique, your system has some problems. Right. Well, I mean, oh. do, you, do you know you you know what I mean there though, Troy? Like if you're if you're delivering an internal critique on his view or something like that, it's like you're trying to try it's not if it's not clear why say that he makes a claim right like he says you know there's a uh all, all of these views entail a contradiction or something like that and you're asking him to substantiate that right to like like demonstrate this or something like that it's like what does what does your view have to do with that unless we're using internal right. critiques specifically in a, in a more precise way to mean like you're trying to show a contradiction like within his that but just the point is like yeah. what what does what does it matter if say that your view was just some incoherent garbage right what's what's the relevance of that to whether he can show that all views other than his own but uh have I, a contradiction wanna, it might be i really want to make clear because i got some chance to state it but um maybe if i'm not interrupted by him right i mean i can make it clear what mistake i think he was making in terms of the ad hoc thing not about it being a logical fallacy because obviously that's a mistake but about um his accusation that I was using ad hoc reasoning. Um, my claim was, was only that there's some possible worldviews that um, don't lead to contradiction, as he admitted. Um, now, of course, we didn't go through each of the other responses, but I mean, I guess it might be consistent that uh, the hypothetical person could agree with Jay on all of his other views uh, uh, to the basic questions, but not this one. And then we still have a counterexample. So whatever. But there's a, a worldview that doesn't lead to a contradiction on these basic uh, issues, um, which isn't Orthodox Christianity or isn't committed to Orthodox Christianity. Um, and that's a counterexample to his claim, full stop. Now, I admitted, um, of course, uh, that the person who holds that view may, I mean, they may not, but they may come to that view um, via ad hoc reasoning. But that's inconsequential, right? The first stage, pointing out a worldview which counter, uh, is a counterexample to his claim, is um, already enough to refute his claim. Because it's, he made a universal claim, there's a counterexample. And when he says that, wait, but now that I'm talking about this person who would reason in an ad hoc way, he somehow jumps from that to, well, what I'm making is that an ad hoc argument, and that's not permissible in debates. But of course, I'm not making an ad hoc argument at all. Nothing I said was ad hoc. I presented a clear counterexample to his claim. And within that counterexample, there might be a person who held their view for ad hoc means or reasons. But so what? I mean, that's irrelevant. It would be like this, right? Suppose um, um, he said that it's not possible to reason in an ad hoc way. I mean, this is absurd. But suppose someone said you couldn't reason in an ad hoc, ad hoc way. And I presented a hypothetical of a person reasoning in an ad hoc way. And then he responds by saying, well, wait, you're, you're just reasoning ad hoc, right? I mean, that's, that's inadmissible in debate. And the point is that, no, I'm not. I'm talking about someone, a possible worldview, which is satisfies your criteria, um, or, or reasoning which satisfies your criteria, whatever in my example, um, wherein the person reasons in an ad hoc way but my presentation of that example, or my argument that I'm making, is in no way ad hoc, right? So he's confused about what, of where the ad hoc reason comes into play. It's, it's not on the level of my argument or my counterexample. It's on the level of what the person in who held the view that I'm hypothesizing about might reason um, to come to that view. And and it's it's no knock against my approach or view um, if the hypothetical person. Uh, or the person who holds, holds this uh, hypothetical worldview reasons in an ad hoc way. Does that make clear? But like, yeah, why? of course. Yeah. It's, it's perfectly clear. Not only are you not reasoning in an ad hoc way yourself, 
the view that you're presenting as a counterexample to his universal claim that all non-Christian views contain a contradiction is not necessarily ad hoc. It could be held in an ad hoc way by someone who holds right. it. But so what? Yeah. <laughs> we've already, at that point, we've already shown by entirely non-ad hoc reasoning that there's a counterexample to his claim, right? Right. And that's it. I mean, he just couldn't press that point or either, or he just got confused about what it is that's ad hoc. And later on in the debate, uh, or when he came back to the discussion, he kept saying, well, you admitted, you said you were using ad hoc reasoning, that you were making an ad hoc example. Um, no, I didn't. I mean, you can listen to the discussion. I never said that. And um, were I to say that, it would have been a slip of the tongue, right? I, but I, I didn't. I said the person who might hold this review uh, view that I'm uh, hypothesizing about might reason to it in an ad hoc way. But I'm not reasoning in an ad hoc way, and that's and there's nothing ad hoc about my counterexample. It's just a counterexample. That's it. Unless you can address the counterexample or change your claim, the debate's over, right? Because that's... <laughs> This is a counterexample to his primary claim of the possibility of the contrary. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, it's perfectly clear. You're not reasoning in an ad hoc way. You're giving a counterexample. And the person, hypothetically, who holds the view described by the counterexample could reason in an ad hoc way. They don't even need to be. Right, exactly. So not only are you not, not only does the hypothetical person holding the view not have to be reasoning in an ad hoc way, the hypothetical person holding the view could, and is logically possible, um, reach the view in an ad hoc way. Which yeah, I hope this, be is, said this is clear to others, uh, to everyone else in, uh, who was listening to this. I mean, that's, this, this was my main issue with the, how the debate ended up. I mean, beyond him just not providing an argument for the, his, his, his uh, major premise. But, um, but in any case... Yeah. Uh, well, okay, so what Helios just said in chat, it says, no, he was saying the hypothetical ad hoc view didn't have a grounding. Sure. I mean, so what? It, even if it doesn't, right? Even if the person in that, who holds that hypothetical view reasons to it by ad hoc reasoning, it's still a counterexample to his claim because it's not uh, incoherent. Helios, you seem so, awfully confident in text. Why don't you actually just come on voice instead of being a uh, coward? Why are they a text? He doesn't want to get on mic. I, I don't care. I, it doesn't matter to me. Oh, no. Why is it that these text cucks have to fucking always run away and make up excuses? Why can't they come in DC? Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Fucking yeah. text cucks. Yeah. Fucking Helios might just, might, might just be confused, but you don't, you don't understand. Like, you can raise a whole range. Of, let's say you can raise just, like, a massive quantity of problems with the counterexample other than saying that it's um, logically contradictory. If it's not logically contradictory, it's a counterexample. That's just all there is to it, right? Jay said all views, all possible views, other than the Christian view, are impossible. They're contradictory, right? So it doesn't matter what other things the, the hypothetical view Troy puts forward fails with respect to. He could grant that it's ad hoc. He could grant that it's know got a whole ton of problems right unless one of the things he grants is that it's contradictory it's a counterexample to jay's view it's not complicated why is the city guy just spamming the chat but won't say anything i have no idea i might have them blocked city guy this idiot guy like right here i'm gonna ping him why won't he fucking say any fucking word here in DC? oh the guy whose name is idiot right? yeah it's so fitting though <laughs> his name What's, I don't even see him in the text. Is he in one of the other things? He responded, he said something like a minute or two ago. Yeah, he just said, it's not a counterexample as it's not, because it's not a true world view. You're just saying anything. Oh, no, no, no that, was, that was Helios who said that. Um, but right above Helios' comment, the, the idiot guy said, see, see the, whatever that means. See, that means that, like, you're angry and you're trying to cope or some shit. Oh, oh, oh see, I don't know why I didn't put that together. Yeah, of course, I know what see means. <laughs> I kept thinking it was, like, see the. They, they just, <laughs> okay, they just, just don't um, seem to understand. It's like it's like if someone said that all mythical creatures are contradictory. And you said, okay, what about right. a unicorn? And then they replied by saying, wait, wait, wait. well, you can't ground the existence of unicorns. It's like, wait, but that's not the point. The claim is that they're all contradictory. Where's the contradiction? Yeah, can I... Let me, let me respond to um, the Helio said a follow-up. He said, it's not a counterexample as it's not, 
uh, because it's not a true worldview. <laughs> well, first of all, or hang on. First of all, um, how do you know that it's not a true worldview? And second of all, even if it's false, that doesn't mean that it's incoherent, right? Something might be coherent, but false. And it's not his claim that it's just false. It's his claim that it's incoherent. And that's what he had to demonstrate. And and, and if it's not, is it, if it doesn't lead to a contradiction, as he seemed to admit, then it's not incoherent, even if it does turn out to be false. Of course, he would have to demonstrate that it's false as well, but that's that's not his claim. His claim is stronger than that. It's incoherent. I mean, this person's just going to keep typing novels at you instead of actually defending their view. And now he said, Jay walked back the claim of coherence. He backtracked that. When? I, I never I heard him backtrack that. that. No way. If you 100%, if you ask Jay, he's going to say the exact same thing. All he's, 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 he didn't if, he, if he's walking back that claim, then he's walking back his, his whole argument. It's, it's supposed to be an argument for he the impossibility of the all contrary. Other, all other worldviews are either incoherent or ad hoc. Right. right. <laughs> That's not the claim that he made. Yeah, we could have made that, and then we would have discussed that argument. But, of course, that wouldn't get him... That's a much weaker argument, right? Because it's not going to get him to the conclusion... Therefore, the Orthodox Christian theism is true, even if we grant that premise, right? <laughs> yeah, of course, we could have discussed that argument if we wanted to make it, but that's he never walked back. Now he's saying he changed it from accusing you of incoherences to accusing you of just giving ad hoc reasoning. Right, but we already explained how it was false that um, I was engaging in ad hoc the reasoning. The issue was not I was only talking about an example that in which someone might use ad hoc reason to come to their worldview. But the example I gave and my reasoning um, to, as a response to his argument was no way ad hoc. It was just a straightforward counterexample. You're cutting out, Jack. Sorry, the issue was not that Troyer was being incoherent. Why are you why are you saying that? Did the guy make a claim that the issue was about Troy being incoherent? Yeah, he said that he said that um, Jay Dyer changed it from saying you were being incoherent to you were being ad hoc, right? But that's right. not the issue. He even said that I admitted to being ad hoc, which <laughs> of course I never did. And and if he wanted to argue that I was arguing uh, in an ad hoc way, then uh, he could demonstrate that, but I don't. It doesn't seem that I was. <laughs> the issue is that any non-Christian worldview, according to his claim, necessarily is incoherent. Right? right. And that was what he couldn't support. And that exactly. was what yeah. Detroyer found the counterexample. And, and right. a funny little nuance that Troy's pointed out repeatedly is that Jay actually unintentionally granted the counterexample when he said, well, it's not incoherent, it's ad hoc. <laughs> and if, remember, at first he said that, well, <laughs> it, it being ad hoc just is it being incoherent, right? Those are like, so either the same that, thing or hilarious. one entails the other. <laughs> right. Well, oh, Moonwatcher is saying that he cannot get his mic to work. Um, if you have a, uh, that's all right. If you, have a, if you have a question or a follow up that you want to um, ask, you can, you can type it in chat. I'll, I'll read it. Ever notice how, like, the people in BC were so violent and hostile and aggressive for no fucking reason? People in BC? Oh, my in text. Like, text chat. That's what I meant to say. Fuck. Oh, it's just J fans. They, uh, they, I mean, they're just idiots. Like, I just really, I don't know what else to say. Like, they're just the stupidest people. They don't make arguments. They just call you cuck or soy boy and, uh, tell you that you're an idiot and blah 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 and it doesn't matter how much you argue with them they'll just keep doing the same and barely any of them will actually like go on mic and defend their view so Sansi is saying explain how possibility isn't undermined by ad hoc well i mean i think jake granted right i mean we seem to be on the same page that he granted that something being ad hoc doesn't mean that it's impossible or incoherent um but of course you might believe something for ad hoc reasons and the thing you believe might turn out to be true, or it might turn out to be at least possibly true or coherent with your other views, um, even if you believe it for ad hoc reasons. So, um, there's, of course, there's nothing about um, uh, some reasoning being ad hoc or, or some something believed for ad hoc reasons um, that entails some sort of incoherence for the rest of your view, unless, um, like, 
you might run into some problems if you have some commitment, for example, to never reasoning in an ad hoc way. You, you, you're doing some, um, by then reasoning in an ad hoc way, you're, you're whatever, failing to look to that commitment. We might say that I mean, maybe you're committed to some sort of contradiction, maybe depending on what your views are exactly. But <laughs> just the act of engaging in ad hoc reasoning itself won't generate that contradiction. Um, for the reasons I described. And he says, you're just saying something contradictory, not presenting an argument. Well, I mean, what more do you want me to say? I'm, I'm presenting, I presented a counterexample to his claim, which he granted, right? I mean, that's it. I mean, the conversation's over unless he's uh, either walked back his earlier claim or or somehow demonstrate that it's not a, contra a counterexample. I mean, what do you want me to say? He is saying that for all Christian worldviews, which are not, oh, sorry, for all worldviews which are not Orthodox Christian theism, um, uh, they generate some incoherence or contradiction. Um, I gave an example. We, we were talking about specifically about uh, uh, logical truths or something. Um, I gave a response which was not the Orthodox Christian response, which he admitted um, didn't generate a contradiction. And so, um, we have, minimally speaking, at least we haven't flushed out the worldview, but we have a worldview that's not the Orthodox Christian worldview, which doesn't lead to a contradiction, which is which his very claim entailed was impossible, right? So this is just a counterexample to his claim. I mean, well, all right, I, I'll, I'll be back in a, a few minutes. I'm, I just got ver verified in the J server. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, I guess huh. this is it then. Yeah, I think that is it. Um, are there any any J fans who want to get quickly annihilated before I leave here? Also, yeah. there were also a few like snipers who were like talking shit to me. And if you're like, you're in BC, I'm right here, bitch. Come at me. All right. Well, I think the J fans are just gonna you know cuck off into the shadows. So you know, bye bye, you you pathetic cowards. If you ever okay. want to you know defend your view, the server's open. Uh, we're waiting for someone to do a better job than your leader who just got. Uh, completely fucked in the ass by Troy. I hope you all enjoyed that. <laughs>